In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Israelites, there are multiple stories in the beast system speculating about our existence. I find it strange that we as a people do not have an accurate view about our origins. The beginning of mankind should be a story every human being know like the back of their hands. The synagogue of Satan, religion, and truth seekers all seem to have a different perspective about our beginnings. The first step every truth seeker must take is not to rely on the beast system's wisdom for truth. The only thing you should look for in the beast system is for history to align with the word. The Most High said the world was given into the hands of the wicked. The book of Ephesians said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In addition to the world being wicked and the people who rule the world are workers of iniquity, we should not look to them to tell us the truth. These people have been lying from the beginning. We should not believe the beast system so-called wisdom about the beginning, nor how the Most High operate. They are an enemy to the Most High and will continue to be an enemy until the end comes. The workers of iniquity are just like their leader, Satan. The scripture says Satan is the father of lies and there is no truth in him. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. When the people of the Most High begin to believe the lies that have been fed to them for centuries, they are deceived. The awakening is not here for the people of the Most High to continue to believe the lies from the kingdom of darkness. The awakening will reveal truth. The truth you're discovering in the awakening is going to challenge what you've been conditioned to believe in the beast system. The people of the Most High need to stop mixing the lies from the synagogue of Satan with the newfound truth they are discovering in the awakening. When you do this, it causes confusion. Satan is the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Israelites, you have to learn to let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. It is the job of the Spirit of the Most High to tell you the truth. The Most High do not want to hide anything from you. He wants to tell you the mysteries. That is why the Most High asked his prophets to write down everything they saw in a vision or dream. In addition, preserve the mysteries revealed to them so that the next generation know what is expected of them and to not forget their God who made them. The synagogue of Satan has done a fine job causing the indigenous black people to forget their Elohim. The Most High said to our ancestors, teach the children. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land of which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth.
Teaching your children is how you transfer wisdom, tradition, truth, blessings, and the most highest expectation to the next generation. If our ancestors honored those commandments of preserving our culture and truth, this generation wouldn't be lost nor deceived by the kingdom of darkness lies. Israelites, it is important to teach and bless your children. Stop letting the other species of mankind raise your children. The Most High said to our ancestors, write down the commandments everywhere. Today, the wicked archaeologists refuse to let the dead rest in peace, as well as they are plundering ancient sites to falsify the truth discovered from the ancient writings of our fathers. The workers of iniquity are the ones hiding the truth from you because they do not want you to become free. The truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Protesting, boycotting, and fighting the heathens is not making us free. If these three things mentioned led to our freedom, the indigenous black people would have been freed a long time ago. The truth sets you free. Ever since the Most High began to reveal truth to me, the more liberated I've become. The kingdom of darkness cannot deceive you when you know truth. If the workers of iniquity who discovered the ancient writings told the truth, there wouldn't be a controversy about the origin of mankind. Satan and the synagogue of Satan want you to be confused about the Most High's creation and your identity, because without knowledge you perish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Satan wants to destroy all of Adam's seed from earth. The scripture said everything hidden will become known and everything that is secret will manifest. When you begin to read the scriptures and the other sacred scriptures that were removed from the Bible, you must be guided by the Most High to understand what you're reading and learning. Without the Holy Spirit, you will believe the lies that were inserted into the scriptures. The Holy Spirit will help you avoid the deceptions written into the scriptures to cause many to stumble. Israelites, let the Most High reveal the truth in the awakening. Stop trying to comprehend what is written with a carnal mind. A carnal mind leads to disobedience and death. If the people of the Most High were listening and allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to them, the doctrines of devils that are spreading in the awakening wouldn't be popular with the remnant, nor would the doctrines of devils overshadow the truth of the Most High's words. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Israelites, it is important to know when reading the scriptures, some words are literal, while most of the written word of the Most High are metaphors. The Messiah spoke in parables. He did this to conceal the mystery from those it wasn't given to know. The only way to decode the parables is if the Holy Spirit is operating in you. The Messiah said it is not given to some to know the mysteries. That is why there's a lot of speculation concerning the origins of mankind, as well as to everything written about the Most High's creation. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. The Behind the Scenes series has revealed a lot of hidden truth. Some of our people are trying to comprehend the newfound truth with human logic. For example, there are many people who believe there are two beginnings for the human species simply because of the way the scriptures is written in the book of Genesis. There's only one creation of mankind from the Most High and later on in this message it will be revealed to you. Before we get into the creation of men, let us go back to the first day of creation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The word of the Most High said, In the beginning, the Most High created the heavens and the earth. The scriptures said the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Israelites, 
the first two verses reveal a lot to us. It was on the first day, the Most High created the heavens and the earth. On the first day of creation, the earth consists of water and darkness. The same very scripture called the earth, the deep. Today, we know the deep as the below surface of the waters. The earth consists of more water than land. According to the beast culture, the land to water ratio is 72% water and 28% land. It doesn't surprise me that the earth has more water than land. The scriptures did say the earth was void. Nothing was here but water. The scriptures said the spirit of the most high move upon the waters and the most high said, let there be light. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The Bible is constructed in a way to give the reader a basic understanding and knowledge about the Most High. In order for us to know what happened in between what is made available to us in the Bible, we need the Holy Spirit as well as the hidden books that was removed and slandered. To get the behind the scenes events that took place on the first day of creation, the Most High revealed the information to Enoch. The second book of Enoch give us a little more insight about the beginning to the Most High's creation. The Most High desired to create visible things from the invisible. The Most High command his living creature, Adoyo, to become visible, and out of the belly of the invisible living creature, Adoyo, came forth light. I commanded in the very lowest parts that visible things should come down from invisible, and Adoyo came down very great, and I beheld him, and lo, he had a belly of great light. And I said to him, Become undone, add oil, and let the visible come out of thee. And he came undone, and a great light came out, and I was in the midst of the great light. And as there is born light from light, there came forth a great age, and showed all creation which I had thought to create. Israelites, the Most High has visible and invisible creatures, in addition, everything the Most High creates is living, regardless of its visibility. The living creature, Adoyo, was invisible, but when he became visible, he was light. The Most High set the light above his throne. The Most High revealed to Enoch that above the light there is nothing else. And I placed for myself a throne, and took my seat on it, and said to the light, Go thou up higher and fix thyself high above the throne and be a foundation to the highest things. And above the light there is nothing else. And then I bent up and looked up from my throne. The scriptures always describe a bright light that surrounds the Most High. The same way the Most High command his invisible living creature add oil to become visible and he was light, the Most High did the same for darkness. According to the book of Enoch, the Most High command his invisible living creature called Arches to become visible. Out from him came forth darkness. The Most High sent him below to be a foundation. And I said, Be open, Arches, and let there be born from thee. And he came undone, and age came forth, very great and very dark bearing the creation of all lower things. And I saw that it was good and said to him, go thou down below and make thyself firm and be for a foundation for the lower things. And it happened and he went down and fixed himself and became the foundation for the lower things. And below the darkness, there is nothing else. We now know that darkness is the foundation to the most High's creation. Below darkness, there is nothing else. The Bible revealed to us that the earth was covered in darkness, making the earth the deep, the foundation to the Most High's creation. The Bible doesn't reveal when the waters were created. However, the book of Enoch said on the first day, the Most High created the waters from the combination of darkness and light. Chapter 17 of the second book of Enoch gives detailed information to how the waters were created. The Most High called darkness night, and called the light day. 
And I separated between light and between darkness, that is to say, in the midst of the water, hither and thither, that I said to the light that it should be the day, and to the darkness that it should be the night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Azras referred to the darkness that was upon the earth as a spirit, which confirmed Enoch's account of how the Most High created the visible from the invisible. And I said, O Lord, that spake is from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and said thus, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work. And then was the spirit, and darkness and silence were on every side. The sound of man's voice was not yet formed. Then commendest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. On the first day, the Most High created the heavens and the earth, as well as separating darkness from light. Asterisk revealed that the sounds of man's voice was not yet formed. That is because man was not created until the sixth day. On the first day of creation, we now know that there were living, invisible creatures. Asterisk referred to these invisible creatures as spirits. In several of my videos, I have said that everything is a spirit. What the workers of iniquity calls personality or emotions are actually spirits. Everything the Most High created is living. A lot of people are having trouble comprehending this truth. Most people are using the carnal mind to understand spirit. The flesh cannot understand spirit. That is why so many people are deceived through unbelief. The time has come for the people of the Most High to ask their Elohim to help their unbelief. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. If darkness and light comes from invisible creatures that are spirits, that would mean the wind is a spirit, hate is a spirit, depression is a spirit. Once the people of the Most High begin to view the world in the correct perspective, they will begin to have greater victory over their enemies. Mental illness will no longer have a stronghold over the people's lives in these last days. The people will become equipped to fight against unclean spirits with the word of the Most High. Spirits are disembodied. That is why they are invisible. Our spirit is invisible. The Most High made us from both nature, visible and invisible. The flesh, our body, is visible. Our spirit that live in our earthly body is invisible. The Most High did many works on the first day of creation. Remember, Israelites, one day is equivalent to 1,000 years. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The second day of creation is when the Most High created the firmament and the heavenly hosts. It was also on the second day when Satan rebelled and he was cast to earth. Let us reveal what the Bible said about the second day. Then we will go behind the scenes to find out what happened on the second day of creation. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. The Bible said, The Most High made the firmament, the purpose of the firmament is to divide the waters in the deep with the waters that are above the deep. The Most High called the firmament heaven. On the second day, the Most High also gathered the waters that are below the firmament into one. The waters that were gathered together are the waters we see today, all of the ocean waters and the seas in the world. The book of Enoch, as well as the book of Asterisk, give the same account with the Bible of the Most High creating the firmament to divide the waters that are below us and above us. The book of Enoch revealed that in the first heaven, above the clouds, is where the waters that are above us is located. 
Enoch went on to say the waters that are above is greater than the seas in the earth. It came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him onto their wings and bore him up onto the first heaven and placed him on the clouds. And there I looked, and again I looked higher and saw the ether, and they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. The waters play a significant role in our creation. Even our human body consists of water. Just like the earth that is 72% water and 28% land, an adult male body consists of 60% water and an adult female is around 55%. Generally, a person can survive three to four days without water. The Most High created Adam out of the four elements. Water is one of the elements. The second book of Enoch give us a little more detail about the second day of creation. The book of Enoch revealed once the Most High divided the waters with the firmament, he then gathered the waters that are below the firmament and created the rocks that became land and called the rocks earth. The rocks and land that are below the waters the Most High called the abyss. And then I made firm the heavenly circle and made that the lower water which is under heaven collect itself together into one whole and that the chaos become dry and it became so. Out of the waves, I created rock, hard and big, and from the rock, I piled up the dry, and the dry I called earth, and in the midst of the earth, I called abyss, that is to say, the bottomless. I collected the sea in one place and bound it together with a yoke. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. The waters that surround us according to the Most High is the deep. The land which we live on, the Most High called earth. The abyss, the bottomless, is where Sheol is located. There are many occasions the Most High open up the earth and the wicked men are swallowed up and descend into the realm of Sheol. I've noticed that the workers of iniquity removed the word Sheol from the scriptures. Some scriptures call Sheol the pits or hell. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. The book of Ezekiel confirmed that Sheol is located in the mix of the deep. Sheol is the realm where the souls of all men go in the afterlife. To learn more about Sheol, watch my video about the afterlife. This message is focused on the deep, the waters. The Most High desired to create creatures that are visible and invisible. The creatures that live in the deep, the waters, were not created until the fifth day of creation. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. The Most High created all the creatures that live in the waters on the fifth day. The Bible does not give us any information about the living creatures that live in the waters until later on in certain books in the Bible. During the time of creation, the Bible made it seem as if the Most High created only the visible animals. However, the book of Asterisk revealed the name of the two living creatures that were also created on the fifth day that live in the waters. Remember, the Most High has visible and invisible creatures. The invisible creatures are spirits. When you read in the scriptures about living creatures, know that they are invisible creatures. 
The two invisible creatures the book of Acts just revealed were created on the fifth day were Leviathan and Enoch. For the dumb water and without life brought forth living things at the commandment of God that all people might praise thy wondrous works. Then didst thou ordain two living creatures, the one thou callest Enoch and the other Leviathan. I find it interesting that the book of Asterisk called the male living creature Enoch. The book of Enoch as well as the Bible called the male living creature that live in the waters Behemoth. And on that day were two monsters parted, a female monster named Leviathan to dwell in the abyss of the ocean over the fountains of the waters. But the male is named Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a waste wilderness named Duodane on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell, where my grandfather was taken up, the seventh from Adam, the first man whom the Lord of Spirits created. Behold now, Behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grasses and ox. Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, and the sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. The book of Enoch said that Leviathan is a female, and his companion Behemoth is the male. Both of these creatures transgress against the Most High. The Most High reserved great judgments against both of these living sea creatures. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Leviathan plays a major role in the end times. The scriptures reference the beast that comes out of the sea, whom the dragon will give its powers. Also, the book of Revelation referenced the two witnesses that will be murdered by the dragon that lives in the sea, Leviathan. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. To the people who believe the invisible living creatures that dwell in the sea are just mythical creatures that don't exist, you are deceived by the lies of the synagogue of Satan. Walt Disney and countless other Hollywood executives and filmmakers have shown you in movies and animation of the invisible spirits that lives in the waters. These spirits are known as marine spirits and they are very real. Do not believe anyone who tell you marine spirits don't exist. I will show you how these spirits are ruling our present society today. Spirits have the ability to possess people. A person can have legions of unclean spirits in them. The Bible has given us many stories to confirm this to be true. The man in the tomb is an excellent example I like to use. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Unclean spirits can also occupy the animals as well. Remember when the devil legion who occupied the man in the tomb asked the Messiah to go into the pigs? Be careful of the meat you consume. That is how many of you are plagued with the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity plagued you with all kinds of illnesses. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. The man in the tomb is described in the scriptures to be a man who suffers from a mental illness. The unclean spirits who occupy him cause him to harm himself. Mental illness is a sign of a person being occupied with legions of unclean spirits. Mental illness is not the only way to know if a person is occupied with many unclean foul spirits. In this example, marine spirits. Today, the beast culture is plagued with millions, if not billions of people occupied with marine spirits. 
Sorcerers love to use witchcraft marine powers to destroy a person. Your dream life would reveal if you're being tormented by witchcraft marine powers. If you see yourself next to the waters, in a pool, swimming in dirty waters, giving birth in the dream, seeing animals that live in the waters and countless sexual acts in the dream. Those are a few examples, but there are many dreams that will reveal to you how marine spirits are destroying your life. Many of you are married to these spirits. This is known as spirit spouse. A spirit spouse will cause you to have failed relationships and make it difficult to get married. Witchcraft powers using marine spirits is one way the workers of iniquity in the beast system is causing division between the black man and the black woman. They are making the other species of mankind appear to be more beautiful and appealing than the counterpart the Most High gave them. The marine kingdom is the largest division in Satan's kingdom. Remember, the world has more water than land. These wicked spirits do not confine themselves to the waters. They are involved in our lives and some of these spirits control governments and nations. Marine spirits are the cause to the perversion we are seeing in today's society. All sexual sins come from marine spirits. The statues the heathens place next to the bodies of waters, ponds, and anywhere with water are always nude. This is to invoke lust. New York has a humongous marine spirit over it. Look into the Statue of Liberty. When the Most High give you an eye to see, you will see the symbolism. Marine spirits are responsible for the rise of the alphabet community. If you don't believe marine spirits exist, look at the confusion that surrounds sexual orientation, the sexual identity, removing the barrier to what is a male and female. All of this is caused by marine spirits. Everyone who submits to these ideologies and practice what the beast culture teach on sexuality are occupied with marine spirits. Another example of marine spirits corrupting the beast culture today, the book of Job said, Behemoth is over all the children of pride. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Who are the people whose slogan and way of life is pride? Israelites and indigenous black people, open your eyes. The truth is right in front of your face. If you want to get to the root of any problem, you have to look into the spiritual. The root cause to the alphabet community's increase of perversion are marine spirits. We all need to pray against marine spirits in these last days. We are all witnessing the consequences of not casting out these devils. Israelites, know that marine spirits are not little devils. This kind requires fasting to get rid of. Don't go against a marine spirit unequipped. Spiritual warfare is required for this kind. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Only 5% of the waters have been explored by humans. The workers of iniquity have no idea what lies in the deep. Israelites, do not let the synagogue of Satan tell you about the world you live in. Ask the Most High and he will reveal it to you. The deep today is the waters. In the deep resides the marine kingdom. This kingdom has visible and invisible creatures. There is more to the Most High's creation than what religion has taught you as well as the school system. This message was about the waters, the deep. I will continue to talk about the other days of creation and going behind the scenes to get to the root. Stay tuned. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee.
And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Analyzing the days of creation will open the eyes of the indigenous black people to understand their environment and their creator, as well as comprehending the most high's divine nature. By now, everyone should know there are many realms. There are many dimensions that are parallel to our world. The most high created the lower things and the higher things from the invisible. The lower things consist of everything below the firmament Darkness is the foundation to the lower things. According to the scriptures, below darkness there is nothing else. And I said, Be open, arches, and let there be born from thee. And he came undone, and age came forth, very great and very dark, bearing the creation of all lower things. And I saw that it was good, and said to him, Go thou down below and make thyself firm, and be for a foundation for the lower things. And it happened, and he went down and fixed himself, and became the foundation for the lower things. And below the darkness there is nothing else. When the invisible living creature Arches became visible, and darkness came out of him, the Most High saw that darkness was good. Everything the Most High created, he saw that it was good. Today, darkness is stigmatized. The beast system labeled darkness as evil, while the Most High made darkness a symbol for the lower things. The earth is covered in darkness for 12 hours a day. The parallel realm to this earth, the deep, is covered in darkness as well. Many of us are led to believe the deep, the realm of the marine kingdom, is a part of the earth. The deep is its own realm. Although we can see the waters and the visible creatures that live in the waters when they come to the surface, we cannot see what is truly in the waters. If you ever stand on a pier or any platform that is over a body of water, darkness is covering the water, preventing you from seeing what lies beneath. Unless you have a light to guide you in the waters, you cannot see the visible and the invisible creatures that lives in the waters. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. The deep is another realm that is a part of the lower things, which darkness is the foundation of. The lower things also include the Abyss, what is known as the bottomless, and Sheol. These places the Most High made as the lower things in his creation. Adam was supposed to be the ruler of the lower things. When he fell, Satan became the god of this world. The scripture says Satan is an evil spirit of the lower places. The devil is the evil spirit of the lower places. As a fugitive, he made Satona from the heavens as his name was Sentinel. Thus he became different from the angels, but his nature did not change. His intelligence as far as his understanding of righteous and sinful things. Above the firmament are the high things the Most High calls the heavens. Religion has conditioned many people to believe that heaven is one place. That is false. There are multiple heavens in the high places, just like there are many realms that are parallel to our world in the lower places. The book of Enoch spoke of 10 heavenly realms. Each heaven has its purpose. 
The heavenly realm are the high places the Most High created above the firmament. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And I placed for myself a throne, and took my seat on it, and said to the light, Go thou up higher, and fix thyself high above the throne, and be a foundation to the highest things. And above the light there is nothing else. And then I bent up and looked up from my throne. Israelites, it is important for you to know that the Most High is the only creator. The Most High alone created all things below the firmament and above the firmament. The Most High created the invisible as well as the visible. The Most High is self-eternal. There is none like him and there is no one above him. I am self-eternal, not made with hands and without change. Give them the books of the handwriting and they will read them and will know me for the creator of all things and will understand how there is no other God but me. As the people of the Most High, it is important that you understand no one is equal to our creator. We live in a corrupt world where the synagogue of Satan is trying to enforce the hybrid creation from the fallen angels as a form of the Most High's creation. They altered the scriptures to make it appear as if the Most High created two sets of mankind, and that is false. Israelites, the synagogue of Satan had control over the narrative for a long time. While they had control, they added and take away from the Most High's words, as well as corrupt the world and distorted history to prevent you from knowing who you are, as well as the truth. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, it covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Now that the Most High gave us back control through the awakening, we have to take hold of our destiny as well as our history. We cannot allow the workers of iniquity to tell our story as well as the origin to our creation. The time has come for us to stop believing the synagogue of Satan's mythologies about the Most High's creation. Yah has revealed the ins and outs of his creation to Enoch, as well as many other prophets. The Most High told Enoch to write everything down. The scripture said Enoch has written hundreds of books. Enoch taught his sons, as well as his people and his generation, about the Most High before the Most High took him. And I bowed down to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me, Enoch, beloved. All thou seest, all things that are standing finished, I tell to thee, even before the very beginning, all that I created from none being, and visible things from invisible. Hear, Enoch, and take in these my words, for not to my angels have I told my secret, and I have not told them their rise, nor my endless realm, nor have they understood my creating, which I tell thee today. And let them distribute the books of thy handwriting, children to children, generation to generation, nations to nations. The synagogue of Satan rely on the ancient writings of our ancestors to falsify history as well as to insert their abominable hybrid creatures into the most high's creation. They also use these books to put the truth in our faces while making the truth appear to be a fairy tale. They hide the authentic books they found while robbing graves and plundering cities all over the world. The synagogue of Satan made available to the public the diluted version that is full of confusion. The people will engage in endless debates about the confusion in the scriptures. While the people are distracted with the meaningless debates, the synagogue of Satan continue to steal, kill, and destroy. I am glad the Most High placed his spirit in his people. We don't have to rely on the beast system or the workers of iniquity to find truth. The Holy Spirit will reveal the truth and tell us the things to come. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Enoch saw the Most High's face. He spoke with the Most High face to face. I believe the Most High took him because he saw the Most High. The Bible said you cannot see the Most High and live. Therefore, the Most High took Enoch after he taught his children about the Most High. 
the origin of our people and the heavenly host, as well as sharing the knowledge gained by distributing the books he has written to preserve the truth. On the 10th heaven, Aravath, I saw the appearance of the Lord's face, like iron made to glow in fire, and brought out emitting sparks, and it burns. Thus I saw the Lord's face, but the Lord's face is ineffable, marvelous, and very awful, and very, very terrible. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. The Most High designed his creation in a way that no one else can take credit for his works. The Most High said to Enoch that he conceived to create a visible creation. The Most High created visible and invisible creatures. Satan and his angels are limited. They cannot create visible things from the invisible. If the fallen angels can create visible things from the invisible, that will make them equal to the Most High. We all know that the Most High has no equal. How can a creature that was created by the Most High be equal to his creator? Some people give Satan and his angels too much credit. Satan has no power. The Most High revealed this to us in his words. Satan can only do what the Most High permits. Satan thrive in the field of deception. But even the sun has peace in itself, while I found no peace, because I was creating all things, and I conceived the thought of placing foundations and of creating visible creation. Now his figure is hideous. He has become abominable among angels, and he has come to be called Satan. What then is his beauty that you should have followed him? And what have you gained by hearkening to him? See his evil works and then look at me, at me, your creator, and at the good deeds I do you. See, I bound him until you came and saw him and beheld his weakness that no power is left with him. The Most High showed as well as explained to Enoch his creation. Only the Most High can create visible things from the invisible. None of the Most High's creatures can create visible things from the invisible. What the fallen angels did was corrupt our world. The scriptures credit the fallen angels for corrupting all things. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. When the scripture said, let us make man in our image and likeness, the word us and our was strategically inserted into the scriptures to make it appear as if more than one entity created men. Also, the placement of these words make it appear as if there is two forms of creation. Remember, Satan does his best work through deception. He has created the doctrine of two forms of men was created through false interpretation of the word. Israelites, the Most High created everything. No other created being formed man in their image and likeness. The Most High created the first man, Adam, in his image. Adam is the first of our species. The people who proclaim there was another kind of a man that live on earth before Adam do not understand the scriptures and the spirit of the Most High is not with them. The Most High is the only inventor of his creation. The Most High is responsible for Adam and his seed. For I created all forces and there is none that resisteth me or that does not subject himself to me. For all subject themselves to my monarchy and labor for my sole rule. The Most High has been trying to save Adam and the righteous of Adam's seed since the fall until now. The seed of the fallen came after Adam. The watchers needed the daughters of man to create the hybrid species. I have countless messages and playlists talking about the seed of the fallen. Go and watch those videos. We've talked about what the Most High created on the first, second, and fifth day of creation. Let us continue to learn what else was created on the remaining days of creation. The Bible said the Most High created the earth and created the ecosystem on the third day. According to the book of Enoch, the earth was created on the second day. 
It was on the second day the Most High formed the rocks and called the rocks earth. It was also on the second day the Most High created the angels. And for all the heavenly troops, I imagine the image and essence of fire. And my eye looked at the very hard, firm rock. And from the gleam of my eyes, the lightning received its wonderful nature, which is both fire and water and water and fire. And one does not put out the other, nor does the one dry up the other. Therefore, the lightning is brighter than the sun, softer than water and firmer than hard rock. And from the rock I cut off a great fire, and from the fire I created the orders of the incorporeal ten troops of angels, and their weapons are fiery, and their raiment a burning flame, and I commanded that each one should stand in his order. Satan, whom the scriptures call Satan El, deceived himself and rebelled against the Most High. On the second day of creation, he was thrown down with his angels after the great war in heaven. The Bible confirmed the war as well as Satan being thrown down from the heavens to the lower things. And one from out the order of angels, having turned away with the order that was under him, conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth, that he might become equal in rank to my power. And I threw him out from the heights with his angels, and he was flying in the air continuously above the bottomless. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Satan and his angels were here before the Most High created Adam. Satan and his angels fell on the second day of creation. Adam was created on the sixth day. Nowhere in the scriptures did it mention any other form of man roaming the earth before Adam. From the second day until the fifth day, Satan and his angels were here. The marine kingdom, the deep, was created on the first day of creation. The Most High did not make any creatures to dwell in the waters until the fifth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Satan and his angels are not human, as well as the visible and invisible creatures of the marine kingdom. What other species of man was walking the earth before Adam? From the first day of creation until the fifth day, no man walked the earth. The second book of Asterisk confirmed this to be true. Upon the fourth day, thou commandest that the sun should shine and the moon give her light and the stars should be in order and gavest them a charge to do service unto men that was to be made. According to the second book of Asterisk, the Most High made the sun and the moon to service men on the fourth day of creation. According to the book of Asterisk, man was not yet created on the fourth day, nor does the book of Asterisk say any form of man was living on earth on the fourth day. The Bible in the second book of Enoch confirmed the sun and the moon was created on the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. 
The book of Enoch give us a little more detail of the Most High's creation on the fourth day. The stars, as well as the other luminaries, were created on the fourth day. The Bible said the Most High created the plants, the grass, as well as the trees on the third day. The Bible also said the earth was created on the third day. The Bible does not say what day paradise was created. I find it interesting that paradise is where the Most High placed Adam and the earth became his home after the fall. The Bible failed to disclose when paradise, what we know as the Garden of Eden, was created when it gave us an account of what took place on the third day of creation. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Just like the Bible does not give us a detailed account about the first man and woman's journey and exclude this vital information from us, the Bible does not talk about the garden, Adam and Eve's first home, until the second chapter of the book of Genesis. This is why so many people are misled to believe there were two sets of men created by the Most High. According to the book of Enoch, paradise was created on the third day. On the third day, I commanded the earth to make grow great and fruitful trees and hills and seed to sow. And I planted paradise and enclosed it and placed as armed guardians, flaming angels. And thus I created renewal. The book of Enoch referred to the garden as paradise. The Most High created paradise the garden on the third day of creation, but did not create Adam until the sixth day. He did the same with the deep. He created the deep on the first day and the sea creatures on the fifth day. The Bible went on to tell us what the Most High created on the sixth day. All of the land animals were created on the sixth day. When it came to the creation of men, the Bible said, let us make man in our image and likeness and give them dominion over the earth. The Bible made those two verses very vague and very controversial, leaving room for the people to fill in the blank with their wild imaginations. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. The people certainly allow Satan to deceive them with the two creation doctrine. I believe the synagogue of Satan did this to make the hybrid creatures of the fallen angels appear to be a creation of the Most High. That is the synagogue of Satan's explanation of the different races. 
only if the people would understand there's no such thing as race. Many people believe the male and the female, the Most High gave dominion over the earth, were the first group of people the Most High created before Adam. Allegedly, the male and the female that was here before Adam in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 are the progenitor of the multiple race of people today. Despite the scriptures not confirming this information, nor does history support this narrative. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The people are looking for ways to explain the origin of the different race of people today. When the truth is spoken, they dismiss the truth. They rather believe the fairy tales because the tales make them feel good about themselves. The fairy tales of the synagogue of Satan proclaim we are all one and human, despite some of us having strange DNA. If we are all human and the same, there was no need for the Most High to make another creation. Saying to the people that the doctrine of two creation in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 is false is not enough. Some people need evidence to believe. The scripture said, Blessed are those who believe without a sign. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. I rather let the word of the Most High show you in the scriptures of what is hidden in plain sight. That way the people of the Most High will learn how to interpret the scriptures with the Holy Spirit. Israelites, the scriptures are a combination of different writers or prophets giving their account of what they witness. In addition, a vision the Most High command them to write and preserve. Each writer will have their interpretation of what took place. However, each account will connect together to give us the complete story. That is why the scripture said with the testimony of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. The book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John give us an account of the same period of time by four different disciples. Each author is narrating their account of the events that took place when the Messiah came. Four different people telling the same story. The scripture also likes to reiterate a story and give us more detail about what took place. That is exactly what is happening in Genesis chapter 2. Some people believe Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 is the first creation of men and Genesis chapter 2 is another creation of men. Verse 4 of Genesis chapter 2 said, These are the days of the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. This verse is letting us know this is a recap of the past. Chapter 2 of the book of Genesis is not talking about a new creation, but the same creation. Please listen with an ear to hear. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Verse 5 of Genesis chapter 2 said, The Most High did not allow the rain to come because there was not a man to till the ground. We have established that no man walked the earth until the sixth day. It was on the third day the Most High created the plants of the field and the trees. Verse 5 of chapter 2 is letting us know that there was no other creation of men. If they were, they would be able to take care of the plants and the trees the Most High created on the third day. Genesis chapter 2 verse 5 is letting us know there weren't any men to do the job. The chapter went on to explain how the Most High created the first man. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 failed to identify. Remember, chapter 1, verse 27 said, The Most High made man in his image. Chapter 2 of the book of Genesis revealed the man's name, 
how he was created and where he lived. The Bible calls paradise the Garden of Eden. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. If the Bible would have told you paradise was created on the third day, the same day the trees and the plants were created, the doctrine of the Most High creating two forms of people would not exist. Even if the people of the Most High do not search the other books that were removed from the scriptures to reveal this truth, the Holy Spirit would fill in the blank and let you know Genesis chapter 2 is giving you a recap about the creation of the Most High. For the indigenous black people who require evidence to believe, let us go deeper into the scriptures. The second book of Astra said, On the sixth day, the Most High created Adam. Upon the sixth day, thou gavest commandment unto the earth, that before thee it shall bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. Of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. The book of Asdras went straight to the point and revealed who was created on the sixth day. The Bible said the Most High made the male and the female on the sixth day, making it appear as if he created Adam and Eve at the same time. Also, with the scribes translating the word to say male and female, it doesn't identify the male and female that was created on the sixth day. The second book of Asdras revealed Adam is the man that was made in the image of the Most High on the sixth day. Asdras went on to say from Adam came the human species. The female that was introduced to us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, she was identified in Genesis chapter 2 as the woman. After the fall, Adam changed her name from woman to Eve. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. The second book of Enoch confirmed that it was Adam that was created on the sixth day, not some strange group of people running around on earth with no purpose. The Most High wanted to create a visible creation. He created his visible creation from the invisible. From the invisible, he made all things visible himself being invisible. As you have heard, the Most High is invisible. When the Most High created the man, the Most High wanted to make his invisible appearance become visible. He created Adam and made Adam his visible image by making him in the likeness of his own face. The Lord with his hands having created man in the likeness of his own face, the Lord made him small and great. Adam is the visible image of the Most High, just as the visible image to the invisible living creature, Adoyo, is light. The indigenous black people are the living, visible creatures the Most High made in his image and likeness, the blueprint to the human species. On the sixth day, I commanded my wisdom to create man from seven consistencies. One, his flesh from the earth. Two, his blood from the dew. Three, his eyes from the sun, four, his bones from stone, five, his intelligence from the swiftness of the angels and from cloud, six, his veins and his hair from the grass of the earth, seven, his soul from the breath and from the wind. And I gave him seven natures, to the flesh hearing, the eyes for sight, to the soul smell, the veins for touch, the blood for taste, the bones for endurance, to the intelligence sweetness. I conceive a cunning saying to say, I created man from invisible and from visible nature. Of both are his death and life and image. He knows speech like some created things, small in greatness and again great in smallness. And I place him on earth, a second angel, honorable and great and glorious. And I appointed him as ruler to rule on earth and to have my wisdom. And there was none like him of earth of all my existing creatures.
and I appointed him a name from the four component parts, from east, from west, from south, from north. And I appointed for him four special stars, and I called his name Adam, and showed him the two ways, the light and the darkness. And I told him, this is good and that bad, that I should learn whether he has love towards me or hatred, that it be clear which in his race love me. Israelites and indigenous black people, that is why you are hated. The hybrid creation know exactly who you are. They have been hiding your origin and the truth to rule over you. If you don't know who you are, you don't know your value and inheritance. The Most High made Adam to rule. Today, the indigenous black people don't control anything despite the Most High giving them dominion and creating the world for them. The hybrid creation has stolen the indigenous black people's inheritance. The same people who proclaim we are all one people. They are the same people oppressing the indigenous black people all over the world. If we are all one people, why are you afraid of the indigenous black people? Listen to me, my children, today. In those days, when the Lord came down onto earth for Adam's sake and visited all his creatures, which he created himself, after all these, he created Adam. And the Lord called all the beasts of the earth, all the reptiles and all the birds that soar in the air and brought them all before the face of our father, Adam. And Adam gave the names to all things living on earth. And the Lord appointed him ruler over all and subjected to him all things under his hands and made them dumb and made them dull that they be commended of men and be in subjection and obedience to him. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The man and woman, the Most High created in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, and gave them the earth for inheritance, in addition, gave them dominion to rule, is Adam and Eve. There were no prior creation of men before Adam. The doctrine of two creations in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and 2 are false. Adam has life on earth. And I created a garden in Eden in the east that he should observe the testament and keep the command. I made the heavens open to him that he should see the angels singing the song of victory and the gloomless light. And he was continuously in paradise and the devil understood that I wanted to create another world because Adam was Lord on earth to rule and control it. The book of Enoch, the Bible, and the book of Asterisk confirm on the sixth day Adam was created. There are many other books confirming this truth as well. Adam is the only form of man the Most High created. Anything outside of Adam and Eve are hybrids. There are many hybrids among us. Adam's seed do not have strange DNA. The synagogue of Satan do not want us to associate the hybrid species with the abominable creation that took place in Genesis chapter 6. The hybrid creation from the fallen angels was destroyed with the flood. The Most High continued to destroy them throughout the generations. They are the only other form of man that walked this earth. They are the Nephilim giants, the seed of the fallen. That creation comes from the rebellious fallen angels and the sinners from the children of men. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The other species of mankind know who they are. It's the indigenous black people, the seed of Adam, who don't know what they live among. They keep trying to give these people an identity. They are not Esau. They are not human. They are a form of a man, a hybrid creation. It takes four generations for the indigenous blood to be removed and that seed becomes spoiled. The indigenous black people are the blueprint to the human species. If there are multiple groups of people among us with no indigenous black people's DNA, what are they? The scripture said the nations conspired against you to cut you off from being a people. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. 
Israelites, the Most High is responsible for one form of creation. The other species of mankind is a hybrid creation from a combination of rebellious angels and sinful indigenous black people. Genesis chapter one is not talking about a prior species of man before Adam. Genesis chapter one, verse 27 is talking about Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter two is continuing the story about the most highest creation. Israelites, before you accept the doctrines of devils coming from the beast culture, ask the most high for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. The truth you are seeking is in the scriptures. Do not let Satan deceive you with his elaborate mythologies. Everything you want to know, the Most High will reveal it. Some have not because they ask not. The answers that you're seeking is within. Start interacting with the Holy Spirit so that you can know the truth and become free. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. But the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, The great proverb about knowing where you came from to know where you're going is very true. A people who don't know their history will remain lost. As the signs of times appear before us, it's important for the people of the Most High to increase their knowledge. Understanding our present era is the only way to know where we're going. Additionally, how to serve our Creator in the spirit and in truth. Having the background information about the first woman and man is just as important about knowing the real Messiah. The first man and woman the Most High created with his bare hands are the only ones who experience living in the garden as well as living on earth. I'm sure Adam and Eve transferred vital information about the Most High and their altered reality with their children to help them live a life that is pleasing in the sight of the Most High. Traditions and culture heritage are passed down from generation to generation. Many family secrets, remedies, and rituals are passed down from the parents to the children to preserve them. I'm certain Adam and Eve passed down wisdom and culture customs to their children that the synagogue of Satan is withholding from the public. 
It was the custom of our people for the leader of every household gather his children to bless them and transfer prophecies and customs to their successor and their children. Adam, Seth, and our father Jacob, the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline, observed this tradition before they transitioned. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Adam and Eve are the first humans. Our traditions and customs will begin with them. The way they live their lives impacted the world. In addition, shift the way we live until redemption comes for the people of the Most High. The fact that the Bible briefly narrates Adam and Eve's journey make their existence in this world insignificant. Adam and Eve's complete journey should have been included in the Bible. The beginning is just as important as the ending. Satan tried to destroy Adam and his seed because he is jealous of Adam. He was upset that the Most High offered salvation to Adam and did not do the same for him. Because of this, Satan waged war with Adam and his seed. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again he said, Inasmuch as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. The way the world treats black people is confirmation to Satan and his followers wishing to harm the seed of Adam. Throughout history, black people have been persecuted by Satan and the other species of mankind. Everywhere they go, the seed of the fallen comes to persecute them. The life the indigenous black people are living on earth confirm what Satan and his host desire to do against Adam and his seed. Satan wants the earth for himself and his host. With the Most High revealing the hidden things, we are getting to the root to the enmity between good and evil, righteousness against unrighteousness. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. But nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. The hidden things is giving the indigenous black people the behind the scenes view to all the evil that has befallen them from generation to generation. When you lack knowledge, you perish. Once you gain wisdom and understanding, you are properly equipped for battle. Israelites, it is important to look not on what you can see, but the unseen. The other species of mankind would say, go back to Africa. Many indigenous black people are returning to Africa just to be persecuted by Satan and his hosts in the form of missionaries and nonprofit organizations, as well as the colonizers who believe they own every land on earth. Satan and his hosts will continue to persecute Adam's descendants until the end comes. After this, Satan called to his hosts, all which came to him and said unto him, O our Lord, what wilt thou do? He then said unto them, Ye know that this Adam, whom God created out of the dust, is he who has taken our kingdom. Come, let us gather together and kill him, or hurl a rock at him and Eve, and crush them under it. Your eyes have seen the good he has taken from you, and in truth he has opened your eyes. 
and you have seen the garden in which ye were with me, and ye have also seen the evil that has come upon you from Satan. But as to the Godhead, he cannot give it you, neither fulfill his speech to you. Nay, he was bitter against you and your seed that will come after you. Israelites, the mistreatment we receive in the beast system is from Satan and his hosts who are bitter against the seed of Adam, whom the Most High has granted salvation. Satan's hosts consist of the fallen angels, unclean spirits, the marine world, and human followers. Despite of the lack of information given to us about Adam and Eve, the Most High gave them mercy and continued to protect them and their seed from Satan's wrath. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. But the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The church preach heavily on the Most High loving the world and saving the world. They use the doctrine of the Most High dying to save his creation from sin to fill the seats in the various religious faiths. When it comes to Adam and Eve, mercy and grace is not extended to them. The church and religion made Adam and Eve appear to be unrepentant sinners. Religion made it seem as if the Most High cast away Adam and Eve, just like the church make it seem as if the Most High put away his chosen people. The spiritual Israel doctrine was created in religion to replace the people the Most High called by his name. The Most High said he would never leave nor forsake his people. The Most High never replaced his chosen people with anyone else. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself. 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. The Most High always have a remnant. Repeatedly, the Most High reassure his people that he will save them and made many promises to them. The workers of iniquity in high places created multiple doctrines about spiritual Israel to replace the original chosen people with the impostors the world accepted as the people of the Most High, as well as indoctrinating the Gentiles into the abomination called religion via the grafted in doctrine. Religion is famous for indoctrinating the people of the Most High with numerous doctrines of devils to steal from them. Every doctrine that comes from religion is to benefit and uplift the seed of the fallen. Every scripture and historical facts that confirm the indigenous black people as the people of the Most High or that put a positive image on the indigenous black people, the children of Satan go out of their way to discredit regardless of the facts. I believe religion slander Adam and Eve just as they crucify and replace the Messiah that came in the Father's name with a false Messiah because Adam and Eve is the progenitor to the group of people the world labeled black. Because the beast system loves black culture but hate black people, the synagogue of Satan has no problem degrading and disrespecting Adam and Eve. Just like many people from the other species of mankind do not respect nor value the indigenous black people. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When has Satan and his hosts ever followed the commandments of the Most High? We cannot expect his children to honor the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. The wicked among us are doing what they are designed to do, transgress. The Bible briefly mentioned Adam and Eve's journey. There is a lot more that have taken place in Adam and Eve's lives that the Bible failed to disclose. 
Instead of respecting the first man and woman, many slander them to uplift the seed of the fallen, the beast system used to replace the original people made in the image and likeness of the Most High. Many people in religion and in the awakening do not know that Adam and Eve repented of their sins and did everything that they could to secure their descendants' future as well as their own. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar, and they took leaves from the trees outside the garden, with which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood they had spilled. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled, and offered it upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus entreating God, Forgive us of our trespass and our sin, and look upon us with thine eye of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before thee without ceasing. Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, look upon Adam and Eve, and upon their blood, which they had held up as an offering unto him, without an order from him for so doing, but he wondered at them and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. He smelt the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through thy blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. The Most High accepted Adam and Eve's sacrifice. Because they shed their blood, salvation came to us. The awakening is infested with so-called woke people who are spreading the lies started in religion about Adam and Eve. Instead of going beyond what they can see and what the beast culture indoctrinate them with, they choose to place a spotlight on the iniquities of Adam and Eve. They go as far as to support doctrines that slander their own people. I don't know what they believe they are accomplishing with slanderous doctrines that are based on lies. How can you be so-called woke and claim the Most High has awakened you out of darkness into his marvelous light and your heart is filled with hate towards your own people? What does it profit the indigenous black people to slander their own? What reward will you receive for doing the devil's work? We must recognize our own transgressions and repent from our sins. We have to remove the beam out of our eyes first before opening our mouths to slander the prophets of old and the anointed the Most High choose to show himself strong through. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Israelites, let the Most High be the one to reward you by doing his will. Do not seek rewards from the beast system. It is important for everyone to know that Adam and Eve were created, not born. With the Most High creating Adam first and Eve second, no one is able to alter or duplicate his original creation. The synagogue of Satan spent their entire existence trying to counterfeit the Most High's creation. The closest they have gotten to duplicating the Most High's human species is the seed of the fallen, as well as living AIs, the tares, and modified organisms. So far, all of Satan's attempt to redesign the human species with his lesser beings failed. None of his counterfeits can compare to the Most High's original design of the human species. The DNA of the original people remain unmatched until this day. Despite of all the infiltration that has taken place in the human population, the original people's DNA remains supreme. The scripture said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, 
and that my soul knoweth right well. The difference between the descendants of Adam and Adam and Eve, we were born and obtain our human suit via our mother's womb. Because we were born instead of created like Adam and Eve, the kingdom of darkness gained an opportunity to infiltrate the birthing process to create hybrids. That is how the watchers were able to create children with the daughters of men. The Most High created all of his creatures one time. He gave his creatures the ability to multiply. The Most High created Adam and Eve, and out of them came the rest of the human population. The Most High did not create the other species of mankind. The existence of any other species of men outside of the original creation of the Most High comes from the imagination of the creatures the Most High created. By now, we all should know that the fallen angels and the human species transgressed and gave birth to another species of mankind. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Sin is the foundation to the other species of mankind. That is why they are wicked. The Most High destroyed the abominable race of giants via the flood. Also, the Most High will eliminate forever all the subspecies that came from the abominable union between the daughters of men and the fallen angels, as well as the wicked of his people at the final battle between good and evil, the battle of Armageddon. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. Some people are having a hard time processing that the seed of the fallen exists, because the scripture said, the Most High destroyed them with the flood. Let me say this. If the Bible said in Genesis that there were giants before the flood and also after the flood, the word of the Most High is revealing to us that the seed of the fallen continue to exist after the flood. Throughout the scriptures, our people encounter the giants and the various subspecies from the seed of the fallen like the Denisovans and the Neanderthals after the flood. Why is it difficult to believe the seed of the fallen still exists? Some of our people are married to them and have children by them. A lot of indigenous black people prefer the seed of the fallen over their own kind. How are the principalities among us ruling the nations in our presence today if the seed of the fallen don't exist? Don't be deceived. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And now the giants, who are produced from the spirits and flesh, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. The scriptures said the earth is the seat of the fallen's dwelling place. They can take many forms to deceive the children of men. Not all who appear human are human. 
As the living descendants of Adam and Eve, we are their direct duplicate. Because we come from them, we are just like them. The indigenous black people have a different appearance from the other species of mankind. It takes two of the same kind to duplicate itself. Whenever two different species crossbreed, a hybrid is produced from the union. You cannot produce an apple from an orange and apple combination. In order for Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply, their descendants must continue to procreate within to continue Adam's bloodline. The other species of mankind's genetic makeup consists of animal DNA, the fallen angel's DNA, and human DNA. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. If you conduct a thorough research on the Neanderthals, you will learn that they are classified under the animal kingdom as well as a subspecies in the human species. The scripture did say the seed of the fallen sin against the animals that would confirm their animal DNA. Today, the other species of mankind are successful in transplanting animal organs into themselves. Who in their right mind would transplant animal organs into the body the Most High said is wonderfully made? The scripture said, all flesh are not the same. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. The other species of mankind is finding success in transplanting animal organs into themselves because their genetic makeup consists of animal DNA. The original people do not have animal DNA, therefore their bodies will reject the animal organs. Most of us are lactose intolerant. We cannot consume animal milk like the other species of mankind. Parasites are comfortable living in their fur, just as parasites live in their pet's fur. Lice is a problem that is unique to them. The truth is staring at us. We must open our eyes to see. We are not the same, just as the scripture said, all flesh are not the same. The Most High designed the first man and woman to resemble him in every way. The scripture said the Most High created Adam from the dust of the ground. After he created Adam, he breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. After the Most High breathed the breath of life into Adam, he became a living being. Since the Most High did not breathe the breath of life into the hybrids, how are they living? What power is controlling them to make them appear to be living souls? Remember, principalities are ruling the strongest nations in this world. Principalities are high-level demonic beings. Satan has the ability to transform himself. The Bible did say the Antichrist, the men of sin, will be able to do great miracles to deceive the children of men. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. The Bible said the Most High put Adam into a deep sleep while he create Eve. Unlike Adam who was created from the dust of the ground, Eve was created via Adam's rib. Then at the end of the third hour of that Friday, O Lord, thou did cause a slumber and a sleep to come over me, and I slept and was overwhelmed in sleep. Then thou did draw a rib out of my side and created after my own similitude and image 
Then I awoke, and when I saw her and knew who she was, I said, This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Henceforth she shall be called woman. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. The Bible does not tell us how long Adam slept while the Most High made Eve. The book of Adam and Eve reveal Adam saying to the Most High in prayer, he did not know how long he was sleeping when the Most High made Eve. Her beginnings is unknown to him. All that he know is that while he was in a deep sleep, Eve was created. Once he awake from his sleep, the Most High brought Eve to him. It was of thy good will, O God, that thou broughtest a slumber and a sleep over me, and that thou didst forthwith bring Eve out of my side until she was out, so that I did not see how she was made, neither could I witness, O my Lord, how awful and great are thy goodness and glory. The scriptures doesn't tell us how long after Eve was created, the Most High brought her to him. What the scripture did say, the Most High named them both Adam. Before the male Adam named the female Adam Eve, the Most High called them both Adam. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. The Most High gave the male Adam the job of naming his creation. Whatever name Adam gave the animals, that was their name. The Most High did not create the female Adam, Eve, right away. The Most High created Adam, placed him in the garden. The Most High commanded Adam to take care of the garden. The Most High made known to Adam the laws for the garden. The Most High commanded him not to eat from the tree of good and evil. Eve was not created yet when the Most High commanded Adam not to eat from the tree of good and evil. Moreover, when thou commandest me regarding the tree, I was neither to approach nor to cat thereof. Eve was not with me, thou hadst not yet created her, neither hadst thou yet taken her out of my side, nor had she yet heard this order from thee. I am not excusing Eve's transgressions. Although she was not present when the Most High gave Adam the instructions, in the eyes of the Most High they are one. The Bible revealed to us that when Satan inserted himself into the serpent to deceive Eve, Eve was knowledgeable about the laws of the garden. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Before Satan deceived Eve, the Most High, or Adam, instruct her concerning the tree of good and evil. That is how she was able to say to the serpent that they were forbidden to eat from the tree. After Adam received the laws for the garden, the Most High brought the animals to Adam to name. It wasn't until Adam noticed he did not have a counterpart like all the animals, the Most High put him to sleep and made the female Adam. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. Before Adam officially named the woman Eve, the Most High called her Adam as well. In the eyes of the Most High, there are one. When Eve sinned, Adam sinned also. Just as our ancestors sinned and was judged, we was judged with them. 
The scripture said, when a man and a woman marry, the two become one. The way a man and a woman become one is through sex. Israelites, this is why sexual immorality is a sin that has an everlasting effect on a person. Sex equals marriage in the eyes of the Most High. Every time you're intimate with a person, you are getting married. Sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Satan has done a phenomenal job in dividing what the Most High made one in the beast culture. Today, the male Adam and the female Adam hate each other. How did the people of the Most High get to this sad state? The woman is a reflection of the man. And of thy good will, O Lord, thou made us both with bodies of a bright nature, and thou made us two, one, and thou gave us thy grace, and did fill us with praises of the Holy Spirit, that we should be neither hungry nor thirsty, nor know what sorrow is, nor yet faintness of heart, neither suffering, fasting, nor weariness. The first name Adam gave Eve was woman. That was the name he called her when the Most High brought her to him. Adam explained because she was taken from the man, she should be called woman. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. The scriptures call Eve woman until the fall and the Most High judged them. You won't find the name Eve in the scriptures until Genesis chapter 3. After Adam and the woman transgressed the laws of the Most High, Adam changed her name to Eve. Eve is defined as the mother to all living. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Israelites, do you notice the name patterns in the scriptures? Our ancestors were particular with the names they chose for their children. Once you transgress or the Most High use a person for his glory, he would change their names. The Most High did this to Jacob, our father. The Most High changed his name to Israel. He did the same to countless other prophets. Presently in the beast culture, Satan has changed the name to every bloodline in the Bible. He replaced bloodline with race. The other species of mankind made sure to change our ancestors' names when they were scattered to the four corners of this world. By changing our names, it caused our people to forget their history and legacy. Today, we are operating under the colonizers' names. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Because Adam and Eve were created beings, they are the blueprint. It was the Most High who created Adam and Eve with his hands. He created them in his own image and likeness. We know for sure that no modification was done to Adam and Eve until the fall. The book of Adam and Eve revealed that Adam was created with the elements. And after their prayers, Adam began to entreat God, saying, O oh my Lord, my God, and my Creator, thou did command the four elements to be gathered together, and they were gathered together by thy order. Then thou spread thy hand, and did create me out of one element, that of dust of the earth. And thou did bring me into the garden at the third hour on a Friday, and did inform me of it in the cave. Satan saw how the Most High made Adam, but he was not able to interfere with the creation of the first two humans. Adam and Eve appearance is the blueprint for the human species. The only way Satan was able to interfere with the appearance of the human species is when the Watchers procreate with Adam and Eve's children. The only modification that took place in Adam and Eve is when the bright nature was taken away from them. 
But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, no long discernment, nor upright feelings. Neither is our bright nature left us, but our body is changed from the similitude in which it was at first when we were created. Adam is the father to the human species. Eve is the mother to all living. Although Adam is the first man, he is not the father to all living. Israelites, the beginning is just as important as the ending. You have to know where you came from to know where you're going. Stay tuned for part two. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Every time the Most High revealed truth by speaking his words through his people, the workers of iniquity in the form of trolls come to cause confusion. Suddenly the children of Satan have the answers to the mysteries of life. The synagogue of Satan proclaim that they don't know the origin of the other species of mankind. They say they can't confirm the appearance of the first humans, Adam and Eve. However, in the beast culture, Adam and Eve are depicted to be white. The church depict the Messiah to be white. The workers of iniquity proclaim that the Most High is also white. If whiteness is the foundation, how come the Most High gave black people the superior genes in every land on this earth? Black people did not have to steal nor colonize any land. The Most High scattered the indigenous black people to all the land on this earth. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. The Most High distributed all the land on the earth to Noah's three sons and their descendants. Shem inherited the middle of the earth. Japheth inherited the northern regions of this world. Ham inherited the southern regions of the earth. All three men are indigenous black men. That is how the other species of mankind are finding black people everywhere they go. The other species of mankind believe they are the original people to all the nations. Until this day, they are trying to convince themselves and the indigenous black people that Egypt is white, despite Mizraim being Ham's son. Now that we're going behind the scenes to get to the root, 
The workers of iniquity are proclaiming that there were other humans before Adam and Eve. They say this to cause confusion. Israelites, the Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. If Adam and Eve are the first humans, according to the scriptures, and the beast system acknowledged them as the first humans, how can the creatures that live before Adam and Eve be classified as humans? If there were other species of beings prior to Adam and Eve, they are not human. You have to descend from Adam and Eve to be classified as a human being. The scriptures only acknowledge Satan and his host as the only other inhabitants of this earth. Satan and the fallen angels were here before Adam and Eve joined them in the deep. Many people do not know about the great war in heaven. The Bible briefly give us an account of the war in the book of Revelations. Satan deceived himself and majority of the angels. The Most High cast Satan and the angels that followed him out of heaven. Satan became darkness and the deep is now his home. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The book of Adam and Eve revealed what took place in the heavens that brought forth the great war in the heavenly realms. The angels revealed to Adam that if the Most High did not cast Satan out of heaven, none of the angels would have remained. But when he fell from among us, there was great joy in heaven because of his going down from us. For had he continued in heaven, Nothing, not even one angel, would have remained in it. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. Satan promised the angels great kingdoms and made countless other promises. Majority of the angels believed him and renounced the Most High and decided to follow Satan. But now, O Adam, we will make known to thee what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them, promising them to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His hosts believed that his words were true, so they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. Adam and Eve were not created when Satan deceived himself and the angels. Because of Satan and the fallen angels' transgression, the deep became their home until the end of the world comes and the Most High judge his creation. Prior to Satan and his angels being on earth, the scripture said in the Bible that the deep was without form. The deep was covered in darkness. Satan became darkness. That is how darkness was upon the face of the deep. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. If the deep was without form and nothing was here according to the scriptures, how can the synagogue of Satan proclaim that there were other human beings on earth before Adam and Eve? The Bible clearly said the deep was without form. The scripture said the spirit of the Most High move upon the waters. Then the Most High began to transform the deep into what we know as the earth. The first thing the Most High did was brought light upon the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The Most High created Adam and Eve and their children for the garden. Once Satan deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, that is when they were kicked out of the garden, just like Satan was kicked out of the heavens and came to this earth. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. 
But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. And he has continued, O Adam, to make war against thee until he beguiled thee and made thee come out of the garden to this strange land where all these trials have come to thee. And death, which God brought upon him, he has also brought to thee, O Adam, because thou did obey him and did transgress against God. Then, when the angels heard these words, they all grieved over him and cursed Satan who had beguiled Adam until he came from the garden to misery, from life to death, from peace to trouble, and from gladness to a strange land. Satan became furious with Adam because he felt that Adam has come to take over his kingdom here on earth. For this reason, he has waged war with Adam and his seed. After this, Satan called to his host, all which came to him and said unto him, O our Lord, what wilt thou do? He then said unto them, Ye know that this Adam, whom God created out of the dust, is he who has taken our kingdom. Come, let us gather together and kill him, or hurl a rock at him and Eve, and crush them under it. Today, the other species of mankind has built great kingdoms. Satan has placed principalities over these nations to rule these kingdoms. That is how Satan's hosts, the fallen angels, obtained the great kingdoms Satan promised them. Remember when Satan tried to deceive Yahshua by offering him all the kingdoms of this world? How can Satan offer Yahshua all the kingdoms of this world if he is not in control of all the superpower nations of today? Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. While the earth first inhabitants, Satan and his followers are living what they believe to be glorious lives with their stolen riches. They deprive Adam's descendants of land and great kingdoms on earth. It's no coincidence that the indigenous black people have the best continent on earth. They are walking on treasures that they do not value. Precious minerals, diamonds, and gold that the leaders of this world covet. Yet the indigenous black people are not benefiting from these treasures. Satan made sure his hosts and all who follow him profit from this world's treasures. The people of the Most High, the remnant, must remember that you are not of this world. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Yeshua said, My kingdom is not of this world. He proceeded to say, If his kingdom was of this world, his people would have fought for him. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Israelites, the deep, what we refer to as earth, is not our home. All of the Most High's creation that followed Satan and was deceived by him live here in the deep. Our true home is the garden of righteousness. Adam and Eve are created beings. They were not born like us. Although we are just like them, before Adam and Eve became flesh, they were unique beings. Remember, the Most High made them in his image and likeness. When Satan came to deceive Adam a second time and Adam forged a covenant with Satan, the verse revealed how Adam was created. The dust of the ground is not the only thing the Most High used to make Adam, but with the four elements. Then Adam held out his hand and put it into Satan's hand. When Satan said unto him, Say now, so true as God is living, rational and speaking, who raised the heavens in the space and established the earth upon the waters and has created me out of the four elements and out of the dust of the earth, I would not break my promise nor renounce my word. When Adam and Eve transgressed the laws of the garden, the Most High stripped them of their bright nature. 
The book of Adam and Eve said the Most High had mercy on them. Instead of killing them, the Most High gave them a body that can tolerate the elements on earth. But when I heard of thy transgression, I deprived thee of that bright light. Yet of my mercy, I did not turn thee into darkness, but I made thee thy body of flesh over which I spread this skin in order that it may bear cold and heat. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done, and they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. The Most High gave them flesh and melanin. Melanin protect the indigenous black people from the sun harsh UV and from many other things. The animals have melanin, the plants have melanin, the other species of mankind have a strange form of melanin. The melanin they have is not like ours. I'm not sure why the indigenous black people believe we are all the same. Before Adam and Eve sinned, they had a body like the angels. The Most High referred to Adam as an angel. And Adam said, after he was raised, O God, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water, but since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. Then God said to Adam, while thou was under my command and was a bright angel, thou knewest not this water. The book of Enoch said in chapter 69 that man was created like the angels. For men were created exactly like the angels, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous, and death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them. But through this, their knowledge, they are perishing, and through this power, it is consuming me. Adam and Eve before the fall were angelic beings. The difference between Adam and Eve and the holy angels, they were made in the image and likeness of the Most High. The Most High has a purpose for the angels, as well as a hierarchy system for the angels. Some angels are made to watch over the Most High's creation. These angels are known as the Watchers. There are angels over the weather. Some angels are messengers for the Most High. There are angels who guard the remnant. The Most High made the man and the woman, Adam and Eve, to create more children of righteousness. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Because Adam and Eve was also deceived like the angels, they were immediately removed from the garden. They were not permitted to enter the garden until the judgment against them are fulfilled. Therefore, Adam and Eve were unable to have children in the garden. Their children was born in the earth, the deep. The Most High, Adam and Eve often called the earth strange land. If the garden the Most High created for Adam, Eve, and their children was on earth, when the Most High sent them out of the garden, they wouldn't call the earth strange land. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones, large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them, and they were as dead. Because whereas they had hitherto been in the garden land, beautifully planted with all manners of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land, which they knew not and had never seen. The Bible said, when the Most High transformed the deep into what we know today as the earth, he created Adam and Eve last. He created them on the sixth day. The scripture said the Most High rested from his work on the seventh day. When the Most High created Adam, the word of the Most High said he put Adam in the garden. While Adam was in the garden, the Most High made Eve in the garden as well. The Bible did not say the Most High put the man, Adam, in the earth to take care of it. The Most High said to Adam to take care of the garden. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. After Adam and Eve sinned, they left the garden and came to earth. Many of us are led to believe the garden and the earth are in the same location. You will soon learn that is false. If the garden of Eden is in this world, 
When Adam and Eve left the garden, they would not refer to the earth as strange land. Remember, Satan and his host was already here when Adam and Eve was banished to the earth. The deep is not the first home for Adam and Eve, nor is the earth the place the people of the Most High would spend eternity. But Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first abode. According to the scriptures, the earth is Adam and Eve's second place of residency. The deep is the place the Most High placed the seed of Adam to carry out the judgment that was decreed against Adam and Eve, as well as the place all the followers of Satan dwell. Once the judgment against Adam and Eve are fulfilled, the garden is where the righteous seed of Adam will dwell. The deep was never the place the Most High created for his children to dwell. As I stated before, the Most High created his children to live in the garden. The garden and the earth are not the same. Then Adam said unto God, O Lord, thou didst create us and make us fit to be in the garden. And before I transgress, thou madest all beasts come to me that I should name them. Israelites, it is important to know that the Most High placed Adam and Eve in the garden when he created them. The workers of iniquity who assist Satan in changing history and altering the scriptures has misled many to believe the Garden of Eden is in the Middle East. Most historians and scholars say modern Iraq is where the Garden of Eden is located. If the Garden was in the Middle East, how come we can't find it? nor see the angels that dwell there currently. Some people say the flood destroyed the garden. There's no supporting scriptures that said the garden was destroyed. There are many scriptures that state the garden still exists. About 300 holy angels of the Most High dwell there and taking care of the garden. Oh Adam, look at that garden of joy and at this earth of toil, and behold the angels who are in the garden that is full of them, and see thyself alone on this earth with Satan, whom thou didst obey. Yet if thou hadst submitted, and had been obedient to me, and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guest among his angels, that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth, that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Then God had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the garden. And there are 300 angels, very bright, who keep the garden and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. The scripture said that the most high place a sheriff with fiery sword guarding the garden to prevent Adam and Eve from entering the garden when they were kicked out of the garden. Until this day, the angels of the Most High are tending the garden and the cherub are still guarding the garden. Additionally, Yeshua said in his father's house, there are many mentions. He will go to prepare a place for the righteous. That place is in the Garden of Eden. And the cherub who guarded the garden was standing at the western gate and guarding it against Adam and Eve, lest they should suddenly come into the garden. And the cherub turned around as if to put them to death according to the commandment God had given him. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. In my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The book of Revelation revealed that after judgment, the righteous will inherit eternity. By now, we all should know eternity for us is in the garden. The scripture said the Most High will create a new earth and a new heaven. The scripture said the new city will come down to us from the Most High. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. If the deep was where the garden was located, there wouldn't be a need for it to come down to us. The garden was not destroyed when the flood came. Enoch, whom the Most High took to the heavens, seen the garden and the tree of life. 
Enoch also said there were great mountains surrounding the earth. Enoch described the other realms like mountains. Read chapter 32 in the first book of Enoch to learn more about the great mountains and valleys Enoch saw in the heavens. The children of Seth dwell on the holy mountain that was close to the Garden of Eden. The second book of Enoch revealed that the Garden of Eden is located in the third heaven. And those men took me thence and led me up unto the third heaven and placed me there. And I looked downwards and sensed the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all the sweet flowering trees and beheld their fruits, which were sweet smelling and all the foods borne by them bubbling with fragrant exhalation. And in the midst of the trees that of life and that place whereon the Lord rests, when he goes up into paradise, and this tree is of ineffable goodness and fragrance, and adorned more than every existing thing, and on all sides it is in form gold looking and vermilion and fire like and covers all, and it has produced from all fruits. Its roots is in the garden at the earth's end, and paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk, and their springs send forth oil and wine, and they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course and go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And thence they go forth along the earth and have a revolution to their circle, even as other elements. And here there is no unfruitful tree and every place is blessed. With the book of Enoch revealing the garden is located in the third heavens, this information will correspond with the scriptures written in the book of Adam and Eve as well as the Bible. The Most High said to Adam and Eve that there are no other place with land but the earth when Adam and Eve asked the Most High to send them to another land for rest. The Most High said to them they can only find rest in the heavens. The garden is the resting place for the righteous. Because the Most High judged Adam and Eve, they cannot enter the garden until the judgment against them are fulfilled. Therefore, the Most High couldn't send them to the garden to rest. The Most High said to Adam, if he could bring him back into the garden, he would have. O Adam, as to what thou sayest, bring me into a land where there is rest. It is not another land than this, but it is the kingdom of heaven where alone there is rest. But thou cannot make thy entrance into it at present, but only after thy judgment is passed and fulfilled. Then will I make thee go up into the kingdom of heaven, thee and thy righteous seed, and I will give thee and them the rest thou ask for at present. But I cannot alter the covenant that has gone out of my mouth, else would I have brought thee back into the garden. The word of the Most High will not return to him void. It must fulfill what he sent it to do. The Most High said he cannot alter the covenant of the five day and a half he made with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve can't go anywhere but the earth to find rest. This confirmed Enoch's vision of the garden being in the third heavens. The earth and the garden are in two different locations. The garden and the earth are not too far apart from each other. When the children of Seth live on the holy mountain, the scripture said the garden wasn't too far from them. The scriptures went on to say how far the garden was from the holy mountain, 15 spiritual cubit. The scriptures went on to say that one spiritual cubit is three cubits of men. Altogether, the garden was 45 cubits away from the holy mountain. For Seth and his children, by reason of their own purity, heard and saw those angels. Then again, the garden was not far above them, but only some 15 spiritual cubits. Now one spiritual cubit answers to three cubits of men, altogether 45 cubits. Seth and his children dwell on the mountain below the garden. They sow not, neither did they reap. They wrought not food for the body, not even wheat but only offering. They ate of the fruit of the trees, well flavored, that grew on the mountain where they dwell. The scripture said the garden was located above where Adam and Eve and their children live on the holy mountain. The garden is not located in the physical realm, but in the heavenly realm in the third heaven. 
The synagogue of Satan know the garden of righteousness is located in the heavenly realm. Satan used to live there before he deceived himself and transgressed. Israelites, another reason Satan is angry against Adam and his seed. The garden of Eden was his home when he was a bright angel. When he sinned, the Most High created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden. The more the Most High revealed his truth through his words, the clearer the enmity between the serpent seed and the woman seed becomes. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Beside the Most High giving Adam Satan's former home, the garden, the Most High granted Adam salvation and not Satan. I hope you are beginning to understand the hatred. The workers of iniquity predict the garden was located in modern day Iraq. Whenever the synagogue of Satan wants a high truth that will flip their world upside down, the origin to many biblical landmarks are concealed. Although they proclaim to be intelligent and have great wisdom, when it comes to the affairs of the Most High, it is unknown to them. They suddenly have amnesia when they don't want you to know the truth. They know the truth will make you free. The kingdom of darkness don't want you to become free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In addition to the synagogue of Satan withholding the true location of the garden, the synagogue of Satan do not want the descendants of Adam to know their true nature. They don't want you to know how unique you truly are. That is why they work overtime to dim your light. We possess powers and authority given to us that we have not tapped into. If the indigenous people know the truth, it will expose the lies they have been telling for multiple generations. The indigenous black people can begin to call on the most high to save them instead of calling on demons and idols for help. The scriptures did say the fallen angels taught men to worship demons for God. Also, the scripture said that the heathens make their sacrifice to devils and not to the most high. And Uriel said to me, here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. When the people of the Most High begin to know the truth, they will become knowledgeable about the demonic entities they live among. Israelites, the reason we can no longer see the garden and the angels that are tending the garden, when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost the bright nature that gave them the ability to see spiritual things. When they obtain a body of flesh, the flesh restrict them from seeing into the spiritual. And Adam said to Eve, Look at thine eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels in heaven praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become of flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. Once the children of Seth joined the children of Cain in their abomination during the time of Jared, Lamech, Methuselah, and Noah were the only ones that remained on the holy mountain and not join Cain's children in their abominations. The Most High revealed to Adam and to all the leaders of Adam's seed about the flood and what will happen after the flood. 
Because of the transgression of the children of Seth, the Most High would not allow them to stay on the holy mountain, and the Most High said they would no longer be able to see the garden. Then he called Enoch his eldest son, and Methuselah Enoch's son, and Lamech the son of Methuselah, and Noah the son of Lamech. And when they were come to him, he prayed over them and blessed them, and said to them, Ye are righteous, innocent sons. Go ye not down from this holy mountain, for behold, your children and your children's children have gone down from this holy mountain, and have estranged themselves from this holy mountain through their abominable lust and transgression of God's commandment. But I know through the power of God that he will not leave you on this holy mountain, because your children have transgressed his commandment and that of our fathers, which we had received from them. But, O oh, my sons, God will take you to a strange land, and ye never shall again return to behold with your eyes this garden and this holy mountain. Altogether, not one of our fathers or of their children remain on that holy mountain, except those three, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. For all the rest went down from the mountain and fell into sin with the children of Cain. Therefore were they forbidden that mountain, and none remain on it but those three men. Israelites, that is why we are unable to see the garden today. It is not because the Most High did not reveal its location, but because of the downfall of the children of Seth, the Most High concealed the garden from his people. The garden is in the heavenly realm. That is why Adam and Eve had a spiritual body that was fit for the garden when they were created. After their downfall, they obtain a body of flesh suitable for the deep, as known as the earth. The deep is a temporary home until salvation comes for the righteous. The Most High said, in the last days, knowledge would increase. Israelites, the Most High is revealing the truth about Adam and Eve. Stay tuned. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain but the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And so it is written, first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Albeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. There are a lot of people who blame Eve for the downfall of mankind. Today, there are a lot of hurt people saying, if Eve did not eat from the tree and also gave to Adam to eat, the scripture said Adam was with her when she ate, our lives would have been better and we wouldn't be suffering. Israelites and indigenous black people, if you truly honored the Most High and repent by serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth, 
you wouldn't be suffering. The Most High said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, I would hear them from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If the indigenous black people were serving the Most High with a pure heart like they served the idols of the heathens, the Most High would have saved his people a long time ago. Many indigenous black people rather complain instead of taking responsibility for their own actions. Instead of holding themselves accountable for their own sins, they rather blame Eve. Adam and Eve repented and served the Most High before they transitioned to the afterlife. The Most High forgave them and made a way to redeem Adam and Eve as well as their descendants. Thousands of years later, their children are complaining about their situations. If the indigenous black people understood their God, they would comprehend that everything was established before the foundation of the earth and the heavens were created. Everyone who is destined for eternity has been determined before the foundation of the world was created by the Most High. The souls to every person that will inherit eternal life has already been created. Some of these people are waiting to be born. And Proveal told me, all the things that I have told thee, we have written, sit and write all the souls of mankind. However, many of them are born and the places prepared for them to eternity. For all souls are prepared to eternity before the formation of the world. A lot of indigenous black people say they want freedom and don't want to associate themselves with the other species of mankind, but they continue to procreate with these people. Welcome them into all areas of their lives. Show them the ins and outs of their culture. Allow these people to teach them abominable pagan traditions. In addition, treat the other species of mankind better than they do their own people. They idolize the other species of mankind, yet they want to convince the world that they seek to be independent and free from the other species of mankind. Stop deceiving yourself. When you begin to separate from the beast culture and not follow after the heathens, then the Most High can begin to save his people. Until then, you will continue to go around in circles until the remnant repent wholeheartedly. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. When the people of the Most High begin to understand spirit, they will stop analyzing the spiritual things with a carnal mind. I've noticed in the awakening, many Israelites are trying to comprehend the spiritual with the flesh. If you continue to operate this way, you will never understand the word of the Most High, nor will you ever understand spirit. The Most High knew that Adam and Eve would transgress his laws. He made plans long before they sinned to redeem his creation. The Most High said he does not find pleasure in the death of his creation. The Most High do not want to destroy his creatures, nor does he celebrate when men perish. The Most High want his creation to live, not die. For I am God, the creator, who, when I create my creatures, did not intend to destroy them. But after they had sorely roused my anger, I punished them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary, they still continue hardening in their transgression, they shall be under a curse forever. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Indigenous black people, you're not the only creatures the Most High created. There are multiple heavens. Each heaven has its purpose. The Most High created the deep that house many living creatures. These creatures are known to us as marine spirits. The Most High created man to dwell in the garden. The Most High created the heavens, the angels, and animals before he created men. The Most High want all of his creation to live. Condemning Adam and Eve for doing what you have done and continue to do, sin, does not make you more righteous. 
The same way the Most High gave you mercy, he did the same for Adam and Eve. The Most High is patient and long-suffering. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. The time has come for the people of the Most High to start to put into practice the lessons the Most High has taught them to cleanse them from their sins. If we're the people of the Most High, our ways must reflect His ways. Many people blame Adam and Eve for the downfall of men, yet Satan, whom the scripture said deceived the whole world, is not targeted nor blamed for being the real manipulator and the cause to the downfall of men. He is your adversary. Satan confessed to Adam that it was him that inserted himself into the serpent to deceive Eve. Satan deceived them because he is angry and a hater of all things good. Satan knew that he couldn't fulfill all that he promised to Adam and Eve. He wanted them to fall so he can rule over them. Your eyes have seen the good he has taken from you, and in truth he has opened your eyes. And you have seen the garden in which ye were with me, and ye have also seen the evil that has come upon you from Satan. But as to the Godhead, he cannot give it you, neither fulfill his speech to you. Nay, he was bitter against you and your seed that will come after you. Then Satan answered and said unto him, It is I who hid myself within the serpent and who talked to Eve and beguiled her until she hearkened to my command. I am he who sent her through the wiles of my speech to deceive thee until thou and she ate of the fruit of the tree and ye came away from under the command of God. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. The Most High warned Adam not to eat from the tree of good and evil, because he knew that Satan would deceive him. The Most High said to Adam, he warned him about the tree so that Adam can make the right choices. Additionally, the Most High warned his people so that if they transgress his statutes, commandments, and laws, his people cannot blame him for their poor decisions. Then I commanded thee concerning the tree, that thou eat not thereof, yet I knew that Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive thee. So I made known to thee by means of the tree, not to come near him, and I told thee not to eat of the fruit thereof, nor to taste of it nor yet to sit under it, nor to yield to it. Had I not been and spoken to thee, O Adam, concerning the tree, and had I left thee without a commandment, and thou hadst sin, it would have been an offense on my part, for not having given thee any order, thou wouldst turn around and blame me for it. But I commanded thee, and warned thee, and thou didst fall, so that my creatures cannot blame me, but the blame rests on them alone. Likewise, Israelites, you cannot blame Adam and Eve for your sinful nature. The blame is solely on yourselves. The same way Adam and Eve seek redemption, you ought to do the same. A lot of the blame for our present condition fall on Eve's shoulder, as if she was the one who told our ancestors to disobey the Most High. As a result, we are living in the land of our captivity. Adam and Eve command their children before they transition to serve the Most High all the days of their lives. Then our father Adam blessed them all and said to Seth, after he had blessed them, O Seth, my son, thou knowest this world that it is full of sorrow and of weariness, and thou knowest all that has come upon us from our trials in it. I therefore now command thee in these words, to keep innocency, to be pure and just, and trusting in God, and lean not to the discourse of Satan, nor to the operations in which he will show himself to thee. But keep the commandments that I give thee this day. Then give the same to thy son Enos. And let Enos give it to his son Canaan. And Canaan to his son Mahalalel. So that this commandment abide firm among all your children. If the children of Seth honored their father Adam's command of serving the Most High. Also if the generation prior to us adhered to the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. We would be dwelling on the holy mountain close to the Garden of Eden, 
serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth. However, our ancestors transgressed and followed the children of Cain. Everyone must take accountability for their own actions. The Bible said that Satan through the serpent said to Eve that if you eat of the tree, you will not die, but become gods, knowing good and evil. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil and becoming gods is not the only thing Satan promised Adam and Eve that made them eat from the forbidden tree. Satan promised Adam and Eve a lot more to get them to eat from the tree of knowing good and evil. Satan promised them the Godhead. He promised to make them a garden just like the Garden of Eden. Also, Satan promised to give them divinity. O oh, Adam, ask him who deceived thee to give thee the divine nature he promised thee or to make thee a garden as I had made for thee, or to fill thee with that same bright nature with which I had filled thee. Ask him to make thee a body like the one I made thee, or to give thee a day of rest as I gave thee, or to create within thee a reasonable soul as I did create for thee, or to remove thee hence to some other earth than this one which I gave thee. But, O oh Adam, he would not fulfill even one of the things he told thee. And the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, You transgress of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. Of your own free will have you transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalt state such as I have, so that I deprive you of the bright nature in which you then were, and I made you come out of the garden to this land rough and full of trouble. Simply telling Eve that she would know the difference between good and evil was not enough to get them to transgress the Most High's commandments. The Bible withheld a lot of information about the reason Adam and Eve transgressed, just as the angels who followed Satan. Satan made great promises to the angels. He promised to give them great kingdoms and many more. The book of Adam and Eve revealed that Adam desired the Godhead. That is why he made a covenant with Satan. When the Most High said to Adam that Satan cannot fulfill his promise to him, Adam asked Satan if he could make him a garden just as the Most High did for him. Satan had to confess to Adam that he couldn't fulfill what he promised him. But after the angels were gone from Adam and Eve, came Satan with shamefacedness and stood at the entrance of the cave in which were Adam and Eve. He then called to Adam and said, O oh Adam, come, let me speak to thee. Then Adam came out of the cave, thinking he was one of God's angels that was come to give him some good counsel. But when Adam came out and saw his hideous figure, he was afraid of him and said unto him, Who art thou? Then Satan answered and said unto him, It is I who hid myself within the serpent and who talked to Eve and beguiled her until she hearkened to my command. I am he who sent her through the wiles of my speech to deceive thee until thou and she ate of the fruit of the tree and ye came away from under the command of God. But when Adam heard these words from him, he said unto him, Canst thou make me a garden as God made for me? Or canst thou clothe me in the same bright nature in which God hath clothed me? Where is the divine nature thou didst promise to give me? Where is that fair speech of thine thou didst hold with us at first when we were in the garden? Then Satan said unto Adam, Thinkest thou that when I have spoken to one about anything, I shall ever bring it to him or fulfill my word? Not so, for I myself have never even thought of obtaining what I ask. Therefore did I fall, and did I make you fall by that for which I myself fell, and with you also? Whosoever accept my counsel falls thereby. Israelites, this is why you must guard your heart. Adam wanted the Godhead. His heart revealed it. That is probably the reason he didn't do much to interfere. The Bible said that Adam was with Eve when she ate. The scriptures revealed in the book of Adam and Eve of Adam asking Satan about all the things he promised him. How would Adam know of these promises if he wasn't with Eve? There are many people in this generation who are trading their glory for the lesser. They are exchanging their soul for fame, money, and power. 
Little do they know Satan cannot fulfill what he promised them. The people who sell their souls to Satan and allow themselves to be deceived by him suffer terrible deaths. Majority of them lose all of the power, fame, and money before they transition to the afterlife. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The second book of Enoch said the Most High desired to create a new world. And in this world, Adam was to be the leader of that world. The Most High tests Adam to see if he would be faithful as well as to see if his descendants would love him. The Most High knew Adam would fall. However, he tests Adam for Adam to know what is truly in his heart. And I appointed him a name from the four component parts, from east, from west, from south, from north. And I appointed for him four special stars. And I called his name Adam and showed him the two ways, the light and the darkness. And I told him, this is good and that bad, that I should learn whether he has love towards me or hatred, that it be clear which in his race love me. For I have seen his nature, but he has not seen his own nature. Therefore, through not seeing, he will sin worse. And I said, after sin, what is there but death? And I put sleep into him, and he fell asleep. And I took from him a rib and created him a wife, that death should come to him by his wife. And I took his last word and called her name mother, that is to say, Eva. A lot of people do not know what they are capable of nor do they know what is truly in their heart until the Most High show you by testing you. Throughout the tales of Adam and Eve, I have mentioned several ways the Most High created Adam and spoke about his nature before the fall. It is important for the people of the Most High to know about both of their nature, the visible and the invisible nature. We often refer to both nature as spirit and flesh. Your flesh is visible and your spirit is invisible. The second book of Enoch, gave us more details about how the Most High created Adam. On the sixth day, I commanded my wisdom to create man from seven consistencies. One, his flesh from the earth. Two, his blood from the dew. Three, his eyes from the sun. Four, his bones from stone. Five, his intelligence from the swiftness of the angels and from cloud. Six, his veins and his hair from the grass of the earth. Seven, his soul from the breath and from the wind. And I gave him seven natures, to the flesh hearing, the eyes for sight, to the soul smell, the veins for touch, the blood for taste, the bones for endurance, to the intelligent sweetness. I conceive a cunning saying to say, I created man from invisible and from visible nature. Of both are his death and life and image. He knows speech like some created things, small in greatness and again great in smallness. And I place him on earth, a second angel, honorable and great and glorious. And I appointed him as ruler to rule on earth and to have my wisdom. And there was none like him of earth of all my existing creatures. And I appointed him a name from the four component parts from east, from west, from south, from north. And I appointed for him four special stars, and I called his name Adam, and showed him the two ways, the light and the darkness, and I told him. The Bible made it appear as if Adam and Eve life has zero value for the redemption of their people. Everything the Messiah did was a repeat of the sacrifices Adam and Eve did to be accepted back into the garden. Adam and Eve shed their blood and offered their blood as a sacrifice for their sin to the Most High. The Most High said to Adam he would do the same for the redemption of his people. Yet now look upon our blood which is offered upon these stones and accepted at our hands like the praise we used to sing unto thee at first when in the garden. And Adam began to make more requests unto God. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through thy blood, 
so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. When Satan tried to kill Adam and Eve by throwing a big rock on them, Adam and Eve were trapped under the rock for three days. The Most High said to Adam, Likewise, he would lay in a rock and sealed with a large stone for three days and night as well. The Most High said he would suffer for their salvation. Yet, O Adam, fear not, neither say in thy heart that I have spread this rock as an awning over thee to plague thee therewith. It came from Satan, who had promised thee the Godhead and majesty. It is he who threw down this rock to kill thee under it and Eve with thee, and thus to prevent you from living upon the earth. But in mercy for you, just as the rock was falling down upon you, I commanded it to form an awning over you and the rock under you to lower itself. And this sign, O Adam, will happen to me at my coming upon earth. Satan will raise the people of the Jews. Job put me to death, and they will lay me in a rock and seal a large stone upon me, and I shall remain within that rock three days and three nights. But on the third day I shall rise again, and it shall be salvation to thee, O Adam, and to thy seed, to believe in me. But, O Adam, I will not bring thee from under this rock until three days and three nights are past. Then Adam and Eve wept and sorrowed by reason of God's words to them that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the days decreed upon them, but mostly because God had told them that he should suffer for their salvation. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre, and departed. There was a lot of events that transpired in the life of Adam and Eve that is symbolic to the coming of the Messiah. This is why the church referred to the Messiah as the second Adam. The Most High shared many prophecies and mysteries with Adam. Adam has shared many of those prophecies with his children. Adam shared everything with Abel as well as with Seth and all of his grandchildren before he transitioned. And now, O Seth, my son, behold, I have revealed unto thee hidden mysteries, which God had revealed unto me. Keep my commandment for thyself and for thy people. When Adam and Eve journeyed to the west side of Eden, the Most High informed Adam not to travel to the western borders. The Most High revealed to Adam that his seed would dwell in that region and submit to Satan and follow Satan. The western region Adam and Eve journeyed to was where Cain and his descendants would settle in the future. When the Most High revealed this prophecy to Adam, Cain was not yet born. The Most High said to Adam that it was his seed. The scriptures verify that Cain is Adam's seed. Due to Cain's hard heart, he followed after Satan and his children were known as the sinners. And God said unto Adam, O Adam, what seekest thou on the western border? And why hast thou left thy own accord, the eastern border, in which was thy dwelling place? Now then, turn back to thy cave and remain in it, that Satan do not deceive thee, nor work his purpose upon thee. For in this western border, O Adam, there will go from thee a seed that shall replenish it, and thou wilt defile themselves with their sins and with their yielding to the behests of Satan and by following his works. After the death of Adam and of Eve, Seth severed his children and his children's children from Cain's children. Cain and his seed went down and dwelt westward below the place where he had killed his brother Abel. During the time the Most High revealed to Adam that his seed would follow Satan, the Most High also said to Adam that he would send the flood to destroy the sinners and save the righteous. This was the first account of the Most High revealing to Adam about the flood. The Most High said to Adam, the land he lived now will become desolate without any inhabitants. Therefore will I bring upon them the waters of a flood 
and overwhelm them all, but I will deliver what is left of the righteous among them. And I will bring them to a distant land, and the land in which thou dwellest now shall remain desolate and without one inhabitant in it. During the leadership of Jared was when man's wickedness was at an all-time high. The Bible revealed violence and wickedness rule the earth. It was also during this time the fallen angels began to procreate with the daughters of men. The Most High spoke to Jared and gave him instructions on what to do concerning Adam's body as well as the flood. The children of Cain were not the only people who defiled themselves. The children of Seth joined the children of Cain in their abominations as well. Before Adam transitioned, he gathered his children and all of his grandchildren to him and gave them specific instructions. Adam instructed his children to take his body with them on the ark. Once they arrive to their destination, they must bury his body in the middle of the earth. O oh my son, hereafter shall a flood come and overwhelm all creatures and leave out only eight souls. But, O oh my son, let those whom it will leave out from among your children at that time take my body with them out of this cave. And when they have taken it with them, let the oldest among them command his children to lay my body in a ship until the flood has been assuaged and they come out of the ship. Then they shall take my body and lay it in the middle of the earth shortly after they have been saved from the waters of the flood. The Bible does not mention that Noah was instructed to take Adam's body and bury Adam's body in the middle of the earth. This is an important piece of information for the people of the Most High to know. Why would the Bible exclude that the body of Adam was taken on the ark? I believe the synagogue of Satan withheld this information because the middle of the earth play a significant role in the redemption of our people. Adam said from where his body is buried, that is where the Most High will come to save his people. For the place where my body shall be laid is the middle of the earth. God shall come from thence and shall save all our kindred. This was Adam speaking to his son Seth and his grandchildren, letting them know that the Most High will come from the middle of the earth to save his people. Where is the middle of the earth? The beast system said the middle of the earth is the Middle East. I believe that is false. The synagogue of Satan say that region is the middle of the earth to hide the identity of the people of the Most High, as well as to support their deceptions. The meeting location of the equator in the prime meridian line is in the South Atlantic Ocean. The body of water that is closest to this meeting place is the Gulf of Guinea in West Africa. According to the B system, there is an island there called Null Island. The closest country to the meeting of the prime meridian and the equator is none other than Ghana. This location plays a significant role in the Israelites' history. A lot of our people were captured and scattered from this part of the world. A lot of our people live in West Africa. We must investigate further about the prophecies about the middle of the earth. Adam went on to say to his people that the treasures the Most High gave him and Eve from the garden must be buried with him. He then turned to his son Seth and to Eve his wife and said to them, Preserve this gold, this incense, and this myrrh that God has given us for a sign for in the days that are coming, a flood will overwhelm the whole creation. But those who shall go into the ark shall take with them the gold, the incense, and the myrrh together with my body, and will lay the gold, the incense, and the myrrh with my body in the midst of the earth. Then Adam said that the treasures the Most High gave him from the garden would be stolen. However, none of them will be destroyed. Then, after a long time, the city in which the gold, the incense, and the myrrh are found with my body shall be plundered, but when it is spoiled, the gold, the incense, and the myrrh shall be taken care of with the spoil that is kept, and not of them shall perish until the word of God made man shall come. When kings shall take them and shall offer to him gold in token of his being king, incense in token of his being God of heaven and earth, and myrrh in token of his passion. Cold also as a token of his overcoming Satan and all our foes. Incense, 
as a token that he will rise from the dead and be exalted above things in heaven and things in the earth and myrrh in token that he will drink bitter gall and feel the pains of hell from Satan. Israelites, this is why the workers of iniquity cannot let the remains of our ancestors rest in peace. The heathens are always digging up the dead to plunder the treasures they find buried with the deceased. Also, the other species of mankind are disturbing the remains of ancient people to try and prove that they are the original people. Every time they disturb the dead, the result always prove our ancestors are the mothers and fathers of this earth. They become disappointed with their findings. The treasures the Most High gave to Adam and Eve from the garden were three gifts. Each item had a purpose. After these things, God said unto Adam, Thou didst ask of me something from the garden to be comforted therewith. And I have given thee these three tokens as a consolation to thee, that thou trust in me and in my covenant with thee. For I will come and save thee, and the kings shall bring me, when in the flesh, gold incense and myrrh, gold as a token of my kingdom, incense as a token of my divinity, and myrrh as a token of my suffering and of my death. But, O Adam, put these by thee in the cave, the gold that it may shed light over thee by night, the incense that thou smellest sweet savor, and the myrrh to comfort thee in thy sorrow. When Adam heard these words from God, he worshipped before him. He and Eve worshipped him and gave him thanks, because he had dealt mercifully with them. A lot of the prophecies the Most High revealed to Adam was not disclosed in the Bible. The Most High gave Jared more instructions concerning Adam's body. Jared said to Noah and to the righteous men that remain on the holy mountain, that Shem would be the one to bury Adam's body in the middle of the earth with the gifts the Most High gave him from the garden. And unto him of you who shall be left, O my sons, shall the word of God come, and when he goes out of this land, he shall take with him the body of our father Adam, and shall lay it in the middle of the earth, the place in which salvation shall be wrought. Then Noah said unto him, Who is he of us that shall be left? And Jared answered, Thou art he that shall be left, and thou shalt take the body of our father Adam from the cave, and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, who shall come out of thy loin, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, in the place when salvation shall come. Everything written must be fulfilled. Shem inherited the middle of the earth for his land inheritance. It made sense that he was selected to bury the body of Adam. Shem was the son Noah blessed and said, Blessed be the God of Shem. Through Shem's lineage came the bloodline of the chosen people, the Israelites. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh to him, they and their children. And he divided the earth into the lots, which his three sons were to take in possession. And they reached forth their hands and took the writing out of the bosom of Noah, their father. And there came forth on the writing as Shem's lot, the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generations of eternity. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Israelites, can you discern why each man was highlighted in the scriptures? Before the foundation of the earth, the Most High knew whom among the children of men he could show himself strong through, as well as who would disobey and follow Satan. From Adam to Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, salvation travels through the righteous. The Bible said Noah's ark stopped and rested on Mount Ararat. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. According to the beast system, Mount Ararat is located in the Middle East in the nation of Turkey. The workers of iniquity claim they have found Noah's ark. According to some of their publications, they can't confirm. If Ghana is the closest country to the middle of the earth, I don't believe the mountain they claim to be Mount Ararat is the correct mountain. The synagogue of Satan has altered the scriptures and changed words. That I can confirm. 
South Africa has a mountain that is called Mount Ararat. This mountain is said to be located in Eden District Municipality in Western Cape, South Africa. Some publications say Mount Ararat in South Africa is located in Limpopo. Israelites, which location do you believe is the correct location to Mount Ararat? The book of Adam and Eve went on to say that the Most High showed Shem and Melchizedek, the priest, where to bury the body of Adam. They traveled some distance from where the ark rested to bury the body of Adam. When they reached the location to where Adam was to be buried, Melchizedek stayed to minister before the body of Adam until the time of Abraham, the patriarch. Shem then departed and returned to his kindred, while Melchizedek remained standing before the body of our father Adam, ministering unto God and worshiping him evermore. And an angel abode with him who protect him and brought him food until the time of Abraham the patriarch. The book of Joshua said Ham stole the garments Adam and Eve wore. He later gave those garments to his son Cush. Cush gave the garments to his son Nimrod. And when Ham beget his firstborn, Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers. And when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments through his love for him. And Nimrod grew up, and when he was 20 years old, he put on those garments. According to the scriptures, Adam's garment gave Nimrod powers. That is why Nimrod is known as the first mighty man on earth. And Nimrod became strong when he put on the garments and God gave him might and strength. And he was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yea, he was a mighty hunter in the field and he hunted the animals and he built altars and he offered upon them the animals before the Lord. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Adam gave his children specific instructions on what to do with his body, as well as the treasures the Most High gave to him from the garden. Nowhere in the scriptures did Adam instruct his children to preserve his garment. He did instruct them to preserve the treasures from the garden. Adam did say the kings of the earth would steal the treasures. Nimrod ruled over the whole earth during his time. However, Noah sealed the door to the ark. No one was able to enter the ark to tamper with Adam's body. Only Shem and Melchizedek, the anointed priest, could open the door. Then Shem took Melchizedek and they saddled an ass between them and they went to the ark. But they had no key wherewith to open the ark, for Noah had fastened it with a padlock after he had come out of it. When therefore they came to the ark, they bethought themselves how to open it. Then came Shem to the door and said to Melchizedek, Come, open it, O thou great God. Then came Melchizedek to the door when he heard Shem's voice and seized the padlock, and at once the door was opened. The book of Joshua said, Ham stole Adam and Eve's garments as they were exiting the ark. Noah probably didn't see when Ham took those garments. Noah did seal the ark after he exited, as you have heard in the scriptures. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Nimrod was a giant. If Nimrod was a giant from the seed of the fallen, he wouldn't be able to fit into Adam's clothes. Nor would the Most High allow him to wear Adam's garment and give him special strength when wearing the garment. Nimrod was deceived by Satan just like countless other children of men fell by Satan's false promises. Many of the heathens' holiday traditions of today are celebrating Nimrod in disguise. Yet when Ragu, Philek's firstborn son, was 130 years old, there reigned one of the first kings that ever reigned on the earth named Nimrod, a giant. That Nimrod saw a cloud of light under heaven, a mere operation of Satan. And he inclined his heart to it and covet its beauty, and then called to one whose name was Santel, a carver, and said to him, Carve me a crown of gold after the pattern of that cloud. Then Santel made him a crown of gold, which Nimrod took and placed upon his own head. 
Wherefore was it said that a cloud had come down from heaven and overshadowed him, and he became so wicked as to think within himself that he was God. Adam's body was buried with the treasures the Most High gave to him from the garden. Adam died before Eve. It was said because he was the first man created, he was the first to die. But Adam was the first whose soul died in the land of Eden, in the cave of treasures. For no one died before him but his son Abel, who died murdered. Abel was murdered. He did not die naturally. That is why the scripture said Adam was the first person to die in the land of Eden. Adam lived to be 930 years old. The death of Adam took place at the end of 930 years that be lived upon the earth. On the 15th day of Bermuda, after the reckoning of an epoch of the sun at the ninth hour. It was on a Friday, the very day on which he was created and on which he rested. And the hour that which he died was the same as that which he came out of the garden. The journey of Adam and Eve plays a significant role in our lives. They were the first humans. It is important that we know about the journey of the first people, the most high made in his image and likeness. The life they live shouldn't be a mystery to us because we are their children. The covenant the most high made with Adam for salvation is the same covenant that transferred from generation to generation. Our generation have hope in that same everlasting covenant that has been traveling in Adam's bloodline. I am glad the Most High gave us an insight to Adam and Eve's journey. Whatever is hidden, the Most High will make known. Let the blessing of the Most High rest upon our father Adam and mother Eve. I pray that this generation reconcile themselves to the Most High in repentance so that the next generation will have hope and salvation. Israelites, serve the Most High with a pure heart. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion and Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. But this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. This generation is living in a time where expressing yourself is becoming a crime. You can't discuss current events without Satan's puppets censoring you and over emotional people getting offended with the truth. The kingdom of darkness is enforcing a society where all of Adam's seed cannot live a life without persecution. Satan said to Adam that because he now ruled over him through the covenant he made with him when they ate from the forbidden tree, 
Satan said to Adam that he was going to persecute him and his seed until he destroyed them and overcome them in this realm. Satan know that Adam and his seed cannot obtain deliverance until the judgment against Adam ends. Then Satan answered and said unto him, It is I who hid myself within the serpent and who talked to Eve and beguiled her until she hearkened to my command. I am he who sent her through the wiles of my speech to deceive thee until thou and she ate of the fruit of the tree and ye came away from under the command of God. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me and hast transgressed against thy God, neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again, he said, and as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. Most people don't know about the covenant between Satan and Adam and the threats Satan made towards Adam and his seed. The synagogue of Satan altered the scriptures and removed prominent books that can further your understanding about the past and present. Despite of Satan's schemes to rule this realm until the judgment against Adam is fulfilled, the Most High gave his people the Holy Spirit to help with their understanding. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal truth to you and tell you the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Whenever Satan and his disciples wants to deceive the indigenous black people to stop them from obtaining knowledge that would strengthen their relationship with the Most High, the synagogue of Satan claimed these books that reveal information about the Most High and the origin of certain bloodlines are lost. For example, when the workers of iniquity don't want to acknowledge the real descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel, they claim the tribes are lost. I'm not sure how a society that has advanced technology can't find a group of people. The serpent seed travel all over the world, colonizing everything in their path. In the mix of colonizing every land, they haven't located the so-called lost tribes. Google can pin your location in seconds. Social media can make certain topics, pictures, and trends go viral in a few minutes. Somehow the rulers of this world cannot locate the so-called missing tribes. The Apocrypha and many other books are a part of the Bible. The synagogue of Satan claimed those books are lost and can't confirm the versions they made available to the public are authentic. Like the Bible, the Apocrypha, and the other books are altered. That is why you need the Holy Spirit. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. The other species of mankind know exactly who they are. They proclaim they are the original people of the world and claim every great civilization for themselves. Somehow they don't know where and who the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel are today. They are conducting DNA tests and disturbing ancient remains to find evidence to prove that they are the original people. Until this day, they can't seem to find any evidence that solidify them as the original people. They rely on their lies and their satanic mainstream media to verify them when history does not acknowledge them. Israelites and indigenous black people, the reason our living conditions is this way, Satan and his hosts are the rulers of this world. This is why I refer to what many people call white supremacy as the beast system. We are living in darkness. Not too many people understand the magnitude of what took place when Satan deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. A spiritual death is far more worse than a physical death. The scripture said the Most High made the man and woman in his image and likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. Everything the Most High is, the men and women he created in his image and likeness is also. 
The difference is that the Most High is the supreme ruler. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Outside of him, there is no one else. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. When Adam and Eve were deceived in the garden, they lost what the scriptures refer to as a bright nature. When Satan deceived them and Adam and Eve made a covenant with Satan, they lost the bright nature. The people the Most High breathed the breath of life into are now living in a dead state. The descendants of Adam and Eve are living in an altered reality. Before Adam and Eve lost their bright nature, they had eyes to see. The book of Genesis said when Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree, their eyes were opened. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Did Adam and Eve's eyes really open when they ate from the forbidden tree? The scripture said they knew they were naked and proceeded to cover themselves. Let us go behind the scenes to the root of the offense that caused Adam and his seed to live in an altered state. In the book of Adam and Eve, Adam lamented about his altered reality. Adam said before his transgression, he was able to see into the heavens and see the angels. Now that he lost his bright nature, everything was hidden. Then Adam wept and said, O oh God, when we dwell in the garden and our hearts were lift up, we saw the angels that sang praises in heaven, but now we do not see as we were used to do. Nay, when we entered the cave, all creation became hidden from us. And Adam said to Eve, Look at thine eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels in heaven praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become a flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. The Most High replied to Adam and said when he had the bright nature, he could see things from far away. Now that he lost his bright nature, he can only see things that are close. Adam and Eve obtained an eye suitable for the flesh. They could only view the Most High's creation from this world, the animals, plants, and anything that is flesh. Then God the Lord said unto Adam, When thou was under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee, and for that reason couldst thou see things afar off. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see things afar off, but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. In addition to seeing things from a far distance, Adam and Eve never had to eat, drink, sleep, and the many other things we are now required to do to upkeep this fleshly body in the garden. Once they were kicked out of the garden, they had to learn how to live in a human body. O oh Adam, when thou was in my garden, thou knewest neither eating nor drinking, neither faintness nor suffering, neither leanness of flesh nor change. Neither did sleep depart from thy eyes, but since thou transgressed and camest into this strange land, all these trials are come upon thee. Israelites and indigenous black people, as the descendants of Adam and Eve, all we know is this fleshly body. None of Adam's descendants experienced the bright nature the Most High gave to his creation. Adam and Eve sinned before their descendants could experience the bright nature Adam spoke about and desperately wanted to get back. We don't know what it's like not to eat, drink, sleep, and do all the things required to upkeep this body. We are living in an altered state. We are living in an environment that was never meant for us. O oh Lord, when I was in the garden and saw the water that flowed from under the tree of life, my heart did not desire, neither did my body require to drink of it, neither did I know thirst, for I was living, and above that which I am now. O oh spirits who wait upon God, look upon me and upon my being unable to see you. For when I was in my former bright nature, then I could see you. I sang praises as you do, and my heart was far above you. 
But now that I have transgressed, that bright nature is gone from me and I am come to this miserable state. And now am I come to this that I cannot see you and you do not serve me as you were wont, for I am become animal flesh. Adam and Eve finally realize they are altered beings and they cannot enter the garden in their conditions. They had to learn to live in the human body and adapt to their new lifestyle. Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature. And they both knew from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off and that they could not enter it. For that now their bodies had strange functions and all flesh that require food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. What their fleshly body required was not in the garden, but from the earth. Adam and Eve are now inhabitants of the earth. They had to learn to live outside of the garden. Then Adam said to Eve, behold, our hope is now cut off. And so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, but henceforth we are earthy and of the dust and of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. The Most High created the indigenous black people for the garden. However, because of Adam and Eve's transgression, we must live outside of the garden. Adam and Eve refer to the world outside of the garden, strange land. Earth is the place Satan and his angels were cast into when they rebel against the Most High. Earth is described as not having light, but covered in darkness. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Most High said he cast Satan into the earth because he has become darkness. When Adam and Eve sinned, they also joined Satan to live in darkness. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guest among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Israelites and indigenous black people, that is why the other inhabitants on this earth hate you. Satan considered this realm his kingdom and decided he will make our lives miserable living here until the time comes for the Most High to deliver his people. The set time the Most High promised to restore Adam and his seed to the garden is five days and a half. Five day and a half in the flesh is 5,500 years. Remember, one day with the Most High is 1,000 years. Yea, the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from God and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be but five days and a half for him to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and similitude, explained to him that these were 5,500 years and how one would then come and save him and his seed. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. I wanted you all to understand as a people, we are not operating in the manner we were created. We are living in an altered state. I wanted you all to know the behind the scenes events that took place that caused us to live in the conditions we are living in, as well as why the other species of mankind hate us. You must look at the root to understand. We are living among Satan and his angels, unclean spirits and hybrids. We are surrounded by darkness. That is why Satan's kingdom is known as the kingdom of darkness. The Bible does not give us an account on how Satan persecuted Adam and Eve consistently in and out of the garden. The Bible does not tell us how Adam and Eve pleaded with the Most High, fast and prayed. They repented of their sins. 
Adam and Eve did everything that they could to reverse the judgment against them. However, when the word of the Most High is spoken, it will not return to him void, but it must do what he sent it to do. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For I am God the Creator, who, when I create my creatures, did not intend to destroy them, but after they had sorely roused my anger, I punish them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary they still continue hardening in their transgression, they shall be under a curse forever. Now that your knowledge has increased about our altered living conditions, the Most High had to teach Adam and Eve how to survive outside of the garden. They had to learn how to live in their altered bodies. What we take for granted today, like knowing what food to eat, how to identify a rock, the heat from the sun, Adam and Eve had no knowledge about these things. Our human bodies is all that we know. The Most High had to teach Adam and Eve how to satisfy their hunger. Adam and Eve body changed. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwell in the garden? When the 12 hours of darkness came upon Adam and Eve, they were afraid of what we call nighttime. When they lived in the garden, they never saw darkness. The workers of iniquity in the beast culture made it appear as if Adam and Eve are knowledgeable about the world outside of the garden. They had a hard time adapting to this world. Fast forward to this generation, as the descendants of Adam, we are knowledgeable about the flesh, but we know nothing about the Garden of Eden. We never experienced living in the garden with the unique body the Most High designed for us. The Most High promised that he would restore Adam and his seed to the garden. That is the promise many indigenous black people hang on to. The covenant promise the Most High made with Adam that has transferred from generation to generations. The remnant cleaves to that promise. Eternity for us is in the garden where the Most High designed for us to be from the beginning. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For well, the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Now that you know we are not designed for this fleshly world, and that we are living in an altered state, I hope now many of you understand why Yahshua said, My kingdom is not of this world. In addition, Yahshua said in heaven we will not get married, but we will be like the angels. Our earthly bodies is designed for this realm, not the garden or eternity. That is why everything in this world is temporary. Satan and his hosts created many doctrines to mislead us and to cause a separation between us and the Most High. Satan persecuted Adam and Eve in and out of the garden. He did the same to their children and to all of Adam's seeds. Satan is a hater of all things good, and he wants this realm for himself. He has raged war with Adam and his seed. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Israelites and indigenous black people, it is because Adam and Eve repented, the Most High had mercy on his creation and granted us salvation. If they did not repent, our end would be like Satan, his angels and followers. 
make sure you keep a repentant heart. I have heard many doctrines concerning Cain and his origin. Some of you are now hearing for the first time how life was and came to be outside of religion. To expand your knowledge, you must start at the root. If you want to overcome your enemy and not become a tragedy like Cain, allow the spirit of the Most High to guide you into all truth. Let us go behind the scenes to the root to see if the doctrine of Satan fathering Cain is true. Many people believe Cain is of the seed of the fallen. Did he start off that way? The Bible does not give an account about Cain having a twin. The Bible said Adam knew Eve and she conceived and had Cain. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Cain and his twin sister are the first humans born from the womb of Eve. The book of Adam and Eve call her Luluwa. Cain means hater. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Adam named him Cain because he hated his sister. Luluwa means beautiful. The meaning of Cain is hater because he hated his sister in their mother's womb. Ere they came out of it, therefore did Adam name him Cain. But Luluwa means beautiful because she was more beautiful than her mother. The book of Jubilee, the Bible, and the book of Adam and Eve name Adam as the father to Cain. I have yet come across a scripture that said Satan went into Eve and fathered Cain. The doctrine of Cain being of the serpent seed is false doctrine. Adam is the father of Cain. He was present when Cain and his twin sister was born. Adam even prayed and asked the Most High to relieve Eve from the pain she suffered during labor. Prior to Adam getting intimate with his wife, Satan tried to get Adam to sin by trying to get him to be intimate with Eve in the act of fornication. Adam refused and seek the Most High on how to properly wed Eve before they were intimate. The scripture said Adam married Eve seven months and 13 days after they were kicked out of the garden. Then Adam and Eve began to fast and to pray until the end of the 40 days. And then they came together as the angels has told them. And from the time Adam left the garden until he wedded Eve were 223 days. That is seven months and 13 days. It takes nine months to have a child. Cain was not born in the garden. Adam and Eve did not know what sex was until the marine spirits appeared to them in the waters and showed them the act which created lust in Adam. Once Adam and Eve witnessed the act, Adam went to seek the Most High on how he should properly marry Eve. Adam was afraid to sin against the Most High after they were kicked from the garden. Adam became cautious he did not want to sin because his desire was to go back in the garden to live. And he answered her, that I may request the Lord to inform me about wedding thee, for I will not do it without his order, lest he make us perish, thee and me. For those devils have set my heart on fire with thoughts of what they showed us in their sinful apparitions. The reason in the beginning of this message, I spoke a lot about the bright nature we had in our altered living conditions to help you comprehend how out of their element, Adam and Eve were outside of the garden. Adam never knew his wife when they were in the garden. Neither one of them knew what a sexual act was until Satan showed them. If they knew each other in the garden, when they ate from the forbidden tree, they would not run to cover themselves if they were engaging in sexual acts in the garden. How can Eve sleep with Satan to produce Cain when Adam and Eve were introduced to the act together by the marine spirits? Eve did not get pregnant until seven months and a few days after they were kicked out of the garden. Adam is the father to Cain and the scriptures confirm. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And God looked at his maidservant Eve and delivered her, and she brought forth her firstborn son and with him a daughter. Then Adam rejoiced at Eve's deliverance and also over the children she had borne him. And Adam ministered unto Eve in the cave until the end of eight days, when they named the son Cain and the daughter Lulua. The book of Adam and Eve said Cain had a hard heart. Israelites, it is important to keep a pure heart because the heart is evil, according to the scriptures. The Most High look at your heart. 
If your heart is hardened, like the scripture said about Cain, this conclude that you are wicked. And the children began to wax stronger and to grow in stature. But Cain was hard hearted and ruled over his younger brother. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Just because Cain had a hardened heart, this does not conclude Satan is his father. If Satan fathered Cain, then he is the father to his twin sister as well. There are many indigenous black people with a hardened heart. The Bible called the Israelites stiff neck. Esau had the same wicked ways as Cain and Isaac is his father. The Most High said in the scriptures, my people are wise in doing evil. But my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. How come many believe Satan fathered Cain when the scriptures clearly state Adam is his father? Do some people believe Adam cannot produce a child that is wicked? Is it because Cain committed the first murder, he comes from Satan? Some of you have wicked kids, but you turn a blind eye to their wicked ways because of your love for them. If some of the indigenous black people were not wicked, it wouldn't be a remnant returning to serve the Most High. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Just as Satan persecuted Adam and Eve, he also persecuted their children. Satan deceived Cain just as he deceived Adam and Eve and many of you today. The Bible does not give an account on how Satan influenced Cain. If you read the book of Adam and Eve, you will see how Satan participated in the first murder. Then Adam told him all that had befallen them, and Abel felt deeply about what his father told him. Furthermore, his father Adam told him of the works of God and of the garden, and after that he remained behind his father the whole of the night in the cave of treasures. And that night while he was praying, Satan appeared unto him under the figure of a man, who said to him, Thou hast oftentimes moved thy father to make an offering, to fast, and to pray. Therefore I will kill thee and make thee perish from this world. There were many events that took place that caused Cain to murder his brother. When the Most High did not accept his offering and accepted Abel's offering, that made him furious. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Satan gossiped to Cain about his mother and father, Adam and Eve, giving Cain's twin sister to Abel to be his wife. Cain did not like that. The reason Cain did not find mercy from the Most High is because Cain did not repent of his sins. If he would have repented, his life would have been different. As to Cain, he was so sullen and so angry that he went into the field where Satan came to him and said to him, Since thy brother Abel has taken refuge with thy father Adam, because thou didst trust him from the altar, they have kissed his face and they rejoice over him far more than over thee. When Cain heard these words of Satan, he was filled with rage and he let no one know, but he was laying wait to kill his brother until he brought him into the cave. Then Cain, the hard hearted and cruel murderer, took a large stone and smote his brother with it upon the head until his brains oozed out and he welted in his blood before him and Cain repented not of what he had done. For if Cain had repented at the time and had said, O oh God, forgive me my sin and the murder of my brother, God would then have forgiven him his sin. After Cain killed his brother, the Most High judged Cain and put a mark on Cain. When Cain left the presence of the Most High, he took his twin sister to be his wife. The Book of Jubilee said Cain took his sister Awan to be his wife. The book of Adam and Eve said Cain went to reside east of the garden. From there he built a city and called the city after his son Enoch. And the Bible gave the same account. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city 
and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And Cain took Awan, his sister, to be his wife, and she bare him Enoch at the close of the fourth jubilee. And in the first year of the first week of the fifth jubilee, houses were built on the earth, and Cain built a city and called its name after the name of his son Enoch. Cain's son Enoch is not the same Enoch that descend from Seth's bloodline. The scriptures give two accounts of Cain's death. The book of Jubilee said his house fell on him. The book of Jasher said when Cain's grandson Lamech was hunting with his son Tubal Cain, Lamech had poor vision. His young son Tubal Cain was instructing him, helping his father locate the animals to hunt. They saw Cain from a distance and perceived that he was an animal. Lamech accidentally killed Cain. At the close of this jubilee, Cain was killed after him in the same year, for his house fell upon him and he died in the midst of his house, and he was killed by its stones. For with a stone he had killed Abel, and by a stone was he killed in righteous judgment. For this reason it was ordained on the heavenly tables, with the instrument with which a man killed his neighbor, with the same shall he be killed, after the manner that he wounded him, in like manner shall they deal with him. And Lamech was old and advancing years, and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And Tubal Cain, his son, was leading him, and it was one day that Lamech went into the field, and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And they whistled, they were walking in the field. Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards them, for Lamech was very old and could not see much. And Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow, and with the arrows he smote Cain, who was yet far off, and he slew him, for he appeared to them to be an animal. The Bible said Lamech killed Cain and Tubal Cain in the book of Genesis chapter 4. Confirming the book of Jasher's account, you decide which version you want to believe. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged a sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. From the time Cain was born to the time he murdered his brother, the scriptures doesn't say anything about Satan being Cain's father. The doctrine of Cain being Satan's son is false. Cain was not a hybrid or of the seed of the fallen. Cain already started his bloodline long before the watchers took an oath to take the daughters of men for wives. It was during the time of Jared when the watchers descend on Mount Hermon and began to multiply with the daughters of men to produce children. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And in the second week of the 10th Jubilee, Mahalalel took unto him to wife Dina, the daughter of Barakiel, the daughter of his father's brother. And she bare him a son in the third week in the sixth year, and he called his name Jared. For in his days the angels of the Lord descended on the earth. The birth of the serpent seed took place during the time of Jared. During this time the earth was full of violence. There were hybrids of all sorts and the giants walked the earth. Jared was born six generation after Cain. The fallen angels waited until the population of the children of men increased before they began to take the daughters of men for wives. Cain was the first man born on earth. There were not enough women on earth during his time for the watchers to procreate with the daughters of men to produce children for themselves. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The Most High is not going to allow the first person born from his creation to have the DNA from the serpent seed. The Most High doesn't admire the serpent seed like the children of man do. 
Cain is an indigenous black man who happened to be the first man born from a woman's womb. He lived in darkness. Besides his hardened heart, Cain allowed Satan to deceive him. Cain is no different from any male born in this generation that is wicked. The Most High cursed him for his wickedness. The Most High cursed many bloodlines that don't serve him and choose to do evil. Behind every wickedness is Satan and his hosts. Israelites, the time has come for you to identify the real enemy. Satan has raged war with you. It's about time that you comprehend that you live on a battlefield. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Cain was a teenager when he murdered his brother Abel. He was still a young man when he took a wife and was removed from the presence of the Most High. If Cain lived in this generation, he would be no different from a hard-headed troubled teen. Unfortunately, the indigenous black community is plagued with troubled people. By his behavior and wickedness, he is of the devil. But in DNA, Cain is 100% indigenous black male. The opening scripture in this message said, If you do good, you are of the Most High. But if you're wicked and unrighteous, then you are the children of the devil. Satan may not have been Cain's biological father, but Cain became his son through his wickedness. Anyone who does the will of Satan is of Satan, regardless of their bloodline. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Israelites and indigenous black people, if you're unrepentant and you follow the ways of this world, Satan is your father. The Most High is giving his people salvation, all those who repent, trust, and believe in him. When the end comes, the Most High will purge the unrighteous at Judgment Day. Make sure you are living a life that is pleasing to the Most High. A repentant heart will grant you the opportunity to inherit the kingdom. Israelites and indigenous black people, guard your heart. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. The synagogue of Satan took the anointed writings from the various books of the Apocrypha and other sealed scriptures the people of the Most High has written to preserve their culture as well as how to serve the Most High 
to create religion and the authorized version of the Bible. Israelites, the Bible, the workers of iniquity in the beast culture made available to us is an authorized version. The authorized version is not the original. The original scriptures are visions and dreams, as well as the life journey of our ancestors. These scriptures were written by the prophets who had these visions, as well as other people the Most High selected to preserve his words. In certain verses in the Bible, the authors would often say the Most High command them to write down what they saw. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Israelites, did you notice the scripture said in Deuteronomy that the Most High would raise a prophet from among your people to put his words into his mouth? The anointed individual will speak what the Most High command of him. The Most High never said he would select someone who is not of your people to speak through. The headship to every faith in religion in the beast system is the other species of mankind. The Pope, the people the world selected as the chosen people, the leader to the Jewish people, the Messiah, and the powerful leaders of this world are from the other species of mankind. None of these people in high places are your people. Israelites, you must know that not all flesh is the same. You have been conditioned to believe all flesh are the same. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another remember just because they look human it doesn't mean they are the messiah the world accepted and worshiped doesn't look like you but resemble the other species of mankind this is a major red flag that should make you question the concept of religion the most High said he would select from among your brethren to speak through how come many Israelites and indigenous black people are looking to the other species of mankind for spiritual guidance? The other species of mankind do not produce the kind of fruits the Most High desire. In addition to the Most High choosing from among your people, the Most High said, never place a stranger as king over yourselves. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose one from among thy brethren, shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. The other species of mankind refuse to worship and serve gods that do not look like them. They don't submit nor allow themselves to be guided by spiritual leaders that do not look like them. The other species of mankind created the abominable graven image of the Messiah that resembled themselves to worship. They refused to paint the image and likeness of the real Messiah because the true Messiah do not look like them. Nobody should be bowing down nor worshiping graven images in the first place. If religion was of the Most High and the head leaders of religion served the Most High, they would not be circulating a false graven image that is deceiving the people. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. The indigenous black people are the only people that will worship and serve gods that do not look like them. Israelites, it is important to know that the Most High will speak and select from your own people to guide you and the scriptures confirm. I am glad that only the Most High can interpret dreams and visions. The Most High will select from among your people and give that individual the ability to interpret visions and dreams. With the scriptures being sealed and written in parables, as well as dreams and visions, the workers of iniquity cannot decode the message unless the Most High give them the interpretation. Israelites, that is how the scripture is being fulfilled that said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. 
heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. The Most High is transferring the truth of his words from generation to generation by raising prophets and teachers from among his people to preserve his words. The synagogue of Satan tried to redirect the people of the Most High with the lies they inserted into the scriptures. Despite the alterations and manipulations of the scriptures, the Most High can show his anointed the same visions he gave to the prophets of old, as well as the interpretation to find the truth. The synagogue of Satan thought they were clever when they inserted themselves into the scriptures and painted their images and likeness into the book of the law. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. Daniel was an anointed prophet whom the Most High gave many visions and dreams concerning the end times. When King Nebuchadnezzar had multiple dreams that made his spirit unrest, he asked the wise men to tell him about his dreams. He could not recall his dreams. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted the wise men and all the workers of iniquity who use familiar spirits and divination to not only interpret his dreams, but to reveal his dreams back to him. The wise men and enchanters said they couldn't do that. He had to tell them the dream first, then they would interpret the dream. Their failure to do as the king desired angered King Nebuchadnezzar. He decreed to put to death all the wise men. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. Israelites, I share this example with you to show you only the Most High can reveal the dreams and visions to whomever he choose. The kingdom of darkness used familiar spirits and sorcery to decode the scriptures. The Bible said only the spirit of the Most High know the thoughts of the Most High. This is why you cannot look to the people who do not know the Most High to find truth. The spirit of the Most High is not with them. With the synagogue of Satan altering the scriptures, it doesn't stop the word of the Most High from doing what he sent it to do. Despite of Daniel being righteous, he could not interpret the dream nor recall the dream unless the Most High revealed it to him. Daniel had to seek the Most High in prayer to show him the dreams as well as the interpretation of the dreams to save his life. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God for ever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Israelites, do not let Satan deceive you into believing his lies. The word of the Most High is truth. You will know the truth if you allow the Most High to reveal it to you. The spirit of truth, as well as the spirit of the Most High, will guide you into all truth. The Bibles that are made available to us may be the authorized version. However, with the spirit of the Most High guiding us, the sealed scriptures can be decoded. 
Today, there are many Israelites and the other species of mankind trying to decode the scriptures without the Holy Spirit. They rely on the carnal mind, the flesh, to decode what is spiritual. In the process of them trying to accomplish what only the Most High can make happen, they've created many doctrines of devils to satisfy their flesh. By doing this, they are reaping corruption. But he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Israelites, do not allow the doctrines of devils mislead you in the awakening, as well as create division and hate in your heart. Guard your hearts. Too many Israelites are slandering our ancestors as if they are without sin. The scripture said, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some Israelites and indigenous black people forget that they have to give an account for every word they say. The affairs of the Most High is not a game or to be taken lightly. Slandering Adam and Eve, as well as other people to make yourself appear to be righteous, in addition to shift blame, is not going to earn you a ticket into the kingdom of the Most High. Playing the victim is not going to relieve you from your role as a man and woman. The Most High command his people to honor their mother and father if you want everything to go well for you. Not too many are following the commands of the Most High of honoring their elders. They rather create outrageous doctrines, slandering them instead of seeking mercy for their own sins. The wicked among us today make sure to diligently follow the laws and statutes of the beast system and ignore the laws of the Most High. The remnant will see to it that they honor the commands of the Most High. The remnant will not allow the spirit of hate and division to misguide them at this hour. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You don't have to be born of Satan to be his child. Anyone who sinned and followed the ways of this world is the children of the devil, regardless of you tracing your bloodline to Adam. Cain is a prime example of being born of Adam and Eve. Because of his hard heart and sin, Satan became a father to him as well as his descendants. Adam and Eve's children were beguiled by Satan just like their parents were. The Most High showed them mercy after they repent, just as the Most High gave this generation grace and mercy after repentance. The book of Adam and Eve not only give us the behind the scene narrative of what took place, but it revealed to us how Satan operates. The root to all evil that is committed in this world, Satan is the father of it all. He that committeth sin is of the devil, but the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. The Most High taught me a valuable lesson about the negative view I had towards our ancestors because of their wicked ways. Before the Most High revealed my heritage to me, I believed Judah was a bad person because of his wicked ways. The Most High showed me I wasn't any different from him since I descend from him. In the word of our Messiah, any one of you who speaks slanderous words and doctrines that is without sin, cast the first stone. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. I suggest the people of the Most High start to humble themselves like the scripture said, repent, take up your cross and follow the Most High. Israelites, do not let the wicked in this generation speak for you, nor teach you about the Most High. You have the ability to go to the Most High directly and establish your own personal relationship with Him. Seth is the third son born to Adam and Eve. After Cain slew his brother Abel, Adam and Eve grieved over Abel for a period of time. Before Eve conceived with Seth, they prayed and asked the Most High to give them another son like Abel. But as for Adam and Eve, they came not together after Abel's funeral for seven years. After this, however, 
Eve conceived, and while she was with child, Adam said to her, Come, let us take an offering and offer it up unto God, and ask him to give us a fair child, in whom we may find comfort, and whom we may join in marriage to Abel's sister. Then they prepared an offering and brought it up to the altar and offered it before the Lord, and began to entreat him to accept their offering and to give them a good offspring. The Most High heard Adam and Eve's prayer and blessed them with Seth. And God heard Adam and accepted his offering. Then they worshiped Adam, Eve, and their daughter and came down to the cave of treasures and placed a lamp in it to burn by night and by day before the body of Abel. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. The Bible said Seth was made in the image and likeness of Adam. Israelites, just because the scripture said Seth was made in the image of Adam, this does not conclude his other children were not made in his image and likeness as well. And Eve brought forth a son, perfectly beautiful in figure and in countenance. His beauty was like that of his father, Adam yet more beautiful. But when Adam came and saw the child's good looks, his beauty and his perfect figure, he rejoiced over him and was comforted for Abel. Then he named the child Seth. That means that God has heard my prayer and has delivered me out of my affliction. But it means also power and strength. And Adam lived an 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. When the scriptures said Seth was made in the image and likeness of his father Adam, the scripture is simply saying Seth had the same love of serving and worshiping the Most High like Adam his father and brother Abel. There are some people who say Cain is the son of Satan because the scripture said Cain was of the wicked one. Cain did not have the same passion in his heart for the affairs of the Most High like Adam and his brother Abel and Seth did. His ways resemble Satan. That is why the scripture said he was of the wicked one. There are people in this generation who have children that do not look like them and did not inherit their ways. There are righteous people who give birth to wicked people. If you continue to listen to this message, you will soon understand why the Most High had to start over and send the flood. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers righteous. Remember, Satan doesn't have to be your biological father to be your father. If you follow him and sin rule your life, he's your father. Just like if you follow the Most High and uphold His statutes and commandments, you become the children of the Most High. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Like Adam, Eve, Abel, and Cain, Satan tempted Seth to deceive him as well. The book of Adam and Eve said Seth believed the words of Satan when he came to tempt him in the form of an angel. Because Seth respected and honored his mother and father, in addition, his parents were overprotected of him due to Cain murdering his brother Abel, Seth replied to Satan and said he would have to consult with his mother and father. If Adam and Eve gave him permission to go with him, then he would follow him to the world Satan said was better than the holy mountain. Satan took on the likeness of an angel to try to gain Seth's trust. The scriptures did say Satan transformed himself into an angel of light. After that, as he was coming down from the altar, having ended his offerings, Satan appeared unto him in the form of a beautiful angel, brilliant with light, with a staff of light in his hand, himself girt with a girdle of light. He greeted Seth with a beautiful smile and began to beguile him with fair words, saying to him, O Seth, why abidest thou in this mountain? For it is rough, full of stones and of sand and of trees with no good fruits on them, a wilderness without habitations and without towns, no good place to dwell in, but all is heat, weariness and trouble. 
He said further, but we dwell in beautiful places in another world than this earth. Our world is one of light and our condition is of the best. Our women are handsomer than any others and I wish thee, O Seth, to wed one of them because I see that thou art fair to look upon and in this land there is not one woman good enough for thee. Besides, all those who live in this world are only five souls. But Seth said to him, Thy speech has amazed me, and thy beautiful description of it all. Yet I cannot go with thee today, not until I have gone to my father Adam and to my mother Eve, and told them all thou hast said to me. Then if they give me leave to go with thee, I will come. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. No one is exempt from the temptations from the kingdom of darkness. Israelites, know that the Most High is not the one who tempts you. Do not mistake temptations from the kingdom of darkness for the Most High testing you. The scripture said the Most High tempts no one. Satan's mission is to destroy the seed of Adam and all who love and follow the Most High. Israelites, when you are tempted, you must pray to the Most High to deliver you. But Seth, when he saw how he kept on talking and that he would not leave him, ran and went up to the altar and spread his hands unto God and sought deliverance from him. Then God sent his word and cursed Satan who fled from him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Throughout the book of Adam and Eve, you can see how Satan took on the form of the holy angels, a woman, a man, and animals to deceive Adam and his family. There were many occasions Adam was deceived, as well as Eve and their children. The Most High is merciful towards Adam. He delivered Adam and his family from Satan's deceptions multiple times. Now, therefore, O Adam, understanding thy heart, I have delivered thee many a time from his hands in order to show thee that I am a merciful God and that I wish thy good and that I do not wish thy ruin. The scriptures said Seth served the Most High. He prayed and fasted continuously. His heart was pure before the Most High. The scriptures went on to say he prayed and fast more than his father did. Seth was committed to the Most High. As for Seth, when he was seven years old, he knew good and evil and was consistent in fasting and praying and spent all his nights in entreating God for mercy and forgiveness. He also fasted when bringing up his offerings every day, more than his father did, for he was of a fair countenance like unto an angel of God. He also had a good heart preserved the finest qualities of his soul. And for this reason, he brought up his offering every day. And God was pleased with his offerings, but he was also pleased with his purity. And he continued thus in doing the will of God and of his father and mother until he was seven years old. Israelites, it is important for you to guard your heart. If your heart is pure before the Most High, he's pleased with you. Do not let your heart become filled with hate division, and all things evil. Too many Israelites and indigenous black people are allowing the kingdom of darkness to harden their hearts. Seth married his sister, Aklia. Aklia was Abel's twin sister. So Adam said to his son, Seth, I wish, O my son, that thou wed thy sister, Aklia, Abel's sister, that she may bear thee children who shall replenish the earth according to God's promise to us. Seth's firstborn son was Enos. Seth's descendants multiply and dwell on the holy mountain close to the Garden of Eden. Seth's children served the Most High and the Most High was pleased with them. Seth was the head of his family. He led his family to serve the Most High with meekness. He did not allow his children to intermingle with Cain's children. Because of Seth's great leadership and his children honoring his instructions to serve the Most High, Seth's children were named children of God. And Seth the elder, tall and good, with a fine soul and of a strong mind, stood at the head of his people and tended them in innocency, penitence, and meekness, 
and did not allow one of them to go down to Cain's children. But because of their own purity, they were named children of God, and they were with God instead of the host of angels who fell. For they continue in praises to God and in singing psalms unto him in their cave, the cave of treasures. Seth's children gave themselves to do the will of the Most High. There were no jealousy and hatred among them. They were innocent and happy people. Seth's children served the Most High all his days. Before his death, Seth gathered his children just as Adam did before he transitioned. Seth commanded his children to serve the Most High all their days. He told them to stay away from Cain's children. He made his eldest son Enos his replacement as the head of the family. Then Seth prayed over them and blessed them and adjured them by the blood of Abel the just, saying, I beg of you, my children, not to let one of you go down from this holy and pure mountain. Make no fellowship with the children of Cain, the murderer and the sinner who killed his brother. For ye know, O my children, that we flee from him and from all his sin with all our might because he killed his brother Abel. After having said this, Seth blessed Enos, his firstborn son, and commended him habitually to minister in purity before the body of our father Adam all the days of his life, then also to go at times to the altar which he, Seth, had built. And he commanded him to feed his people in righteousness, in judgment, and purity all the days of his life. Every time the head of the family transitioned, they would follow the same tradition of gathering everyone to be blessed and appoint the next head to lead the family in righteousness. The Most High kept the children of Cain and the children of Seth separated. Cain and his descendants dwell at the bottom of the mountain. They could not go to the top of the holy mountain to where Seth's children lived. Cain's descendants lived in sin. They multiplied quickly because they engaged in fornication. Seth's children were committed to serving the Most High that they took the place of the angels who had fallen. Meanwhile, the children of Seth who were on the holy mountain prayed and praised God in the place of the host of angels who had fallen. Wherefore, God had called them angels because he rejoiced over them greatly. Cain's children are known as the sinners, the doers of unrighteousness. There is a doctrine about the curse the Most High placed on Cain. Most people believe the curse changed his appearance. That is false. The curse the Most High placed on him was fear and terror. He couldn't find rest anywhere he goes. He became a wanderer. The Bible said a vagabond. Meanwhile, Cain, ever since God had cast him off and had cursed him with trembling and terror, could neither settle nor find rest in any one place, but wandered from place to place. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. We all must remember that we are in a battle between good and evil. Righteousness against unrighteousness. Satan will tempt and persecute whomever to destroy the seed of Adam and to take control of this world. The Israelites and indigenous black people must wise up to Satan's plans and equip themselves with the armor of the Most High to withstand the devil. Seth's descendants honor and serve the Most High until Jared became the leader of his people. The Most High prophesied to Adam about the flood and what would happen to his people long before it took place. Mahalalel revealed to Jared his son about the flood and how the children of Seth would be led astray in his generation. He then kissed his face and said to him, O Jared, my son, I adjure thee by him who had made heaven and earth to watch over thy people and to feed them in righteousness and in innocency and not to let one of them go down from this holy mountain to the children of Cain, lest he perish with them. But I also know that thy children will not hearken unto thee, and that they will go down from this mountain and hold intercourse with the children of Cain, and that they shall perish with them. O my son, teach them and watch over them, that no guilt attach to thee on their account. Jared himself was led astray by Satan until he prayed and the Most High delivered him. Satan used Cain's children to lure the children of Seth into sin. 
Cain's children would tempt them with music, clothing, and all sorts of abominations to get them to join them. Cain's children did this for a year until the children of Seth began to be led astray. But after this, they no longer kept his commandment, nor held by the promise he had made to their fathers. But they relaxed from their fasting and praying and from the counsel of Jared, their father. And they kept on gathering together on the top of the mountain to look upon the children of Cain from morning until evening and upon what they did, upon their beautiful dresses and ornaments. Then the children of Cain looked up from below and saw the children of Seth standing in troops on top of the mountain, and they called to them to come down to them. Seth's descendants began to go down from the holy mountain to join the children of Cain. Satan deceived them to the point that they no longer listened to Jared. Seth's descendants wanted to enjoy themselves with the children of Cain. Jared said to them, if you leave the holy mountain, you cannot come back. The children of Seth did not listen to Jared. They all went down from the holy mountain to join the children of Cain in their abominations. Satan filled the heart of the children of Seth with lust, as well as the daughters of Cain with lust. The Most High became angry with the children of Seth. And God was angry with them and repented of them because they had come down from glory and had thereby lost or forsaken their own purity or innocency and were fallen into the defilement of sin. The children of Seth were led astray with Satan's many temptations using the children of Cain to lure them into the lust of the flesh. During this time, the earth was filled with sin and violence. Israelites, another significant event took place during the time of Jared. It was during this time the watchers took an oath to procreate with the daughters of men. It was during this time the infiltration took place that created the seed of the fallen. The children of Seth, as well as the children of Cain, engaged in the abominations. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The children of Seth were close to the Most High. They were like angels. They had great leadership, and they kept the statutes and commandments of the Most High. With all the wisdom and understanding they had, despite of their righteous upbringing, Satan managed to deceive them and separated them from the Most High. Seth's children made a conscious decision to join the children of Cain in sin. Israelites, I hope the story of the children of Seth opened your eyes to show you that the decisions you make comes with major consequences. The children of Seth, despite of all the warning, made the decision to leave the presence of the Most High to become one with the kingdom of darkness. The downfall of the children of Seth and the increase of sin and violence on the earth caused the Most High to send the flood. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, but the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. To the people who like to make certain characters in the scriptures appear to be innocent and place the total blame on one person, Seth descendants who many of you are, made the decision to join the children of Cain in sin. It was their decision that caused many to perish in the flood. I've seen comments from some people saying Adam was not deceived, it was Eve. Adam made the decision to eat. None of you are victims or innocent. You have to make the conscious decision to live a set-apart life. That is what Noah, Lamech, Methuselah, and Enoch did. They were the only ones who did not leave the holy mountain to join the children of Cain in sin. Altogether, not one of our fathers or of their children remain on that holy mountain, except those three, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. For all the rest went down from the mountain and fell into sin with the children of Cain. Therefore were they forbidden that mountain. 
and none remain on it but those three men. Israelites, I hope the decisions you are making today bring you closer to the Most High. At this point, it doesn't matter who sinned that led to our captivity. It's our turn as the people of the Most High to make the decisions to uphold righteousness all the days of our lives. Satan is the enemy. A lot of Israelites are misled to believe flesh and blood is the enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers with the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are many Israelites that have been deceived by Satan's lies that they blame other people for their wickedness. They've become aggressive towards their own people. They value leadership and spiritual guidance from the children of the wicked one. Satan's current agenda to destroy the indigenous black family through division and hate is taking root in the heart of many. Some indigenous black people are looking for refuge and love in the arms of the very people who are oppressing them and assisting Satan in leading them astray. The root to all your troubles come from the kingdom of darkness. This generation is not exempt from the kingdom of darkness. You must repent from the sins of our fathers and repent from your own sins. Do not let the God of this world blind your eyes that you cannot see your own iniquities. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Israelites, when you read the stories about our ancestors in the scriptures, the intent is to help you learn from their mistakes. The Most High made sure his words never pass away so that every generation gain the opportunity to know his words and not perish from a lack of knowledge. Do not let Satan deceive you into believing he doesn't exist and that he doesn't persecute the people in this generation. He's your adversary and he will sift you, especially if you love the Most High and want to do the will of the Most High. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Seth maintained his pure heart throughout his life. His descendants did also until they went astray by following the wicked among them and Satan orchestrating their downfall behind the scenes. Seth's descendants before the flood allowed Satan to deceive them into accepting the ways of this world. Israelites, you are Seth's descendants after the flood. Do not become a casualty like our ancestors who allowed the lust of the flesh to control them. Israelites, now is the time for you to make a conscious decision to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, just like Seth command his children before he transitioned. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And there was war in heaven. 
Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Many of us, including myself, were led to believe heaven is a place of peace and light. Because the Most High dwell in the heavenly realm, we automatically believe that heavens is holy and righteousness rule the heavenly realms. The first rebellion against the Most High took place in the heavens. Satan was the mastermind behind the rebellion. Satan deceived many angels in the process of his rebellion. The first rebellion led to a great war in the heavens. Many of us are not aware that there are many realms in the heavenly places. The scripture is called the place above the firmament, the heavens, as well as the higher creation of the Most High. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. The firmament is the border between the lower places and the higher places. The heavens and the earth was created on the same day. Throughout the days of creation, the Most High began to create visible and invisible creatures to populate the heavens and the earth. Each day of creation had its purpose. Although the Bible does not say when the angels were created, as well as the war that followed after the creation of the angels, the ancient writings of our ancestors has revealed this information. The synagogue of Satan has concealed these scriptures. Some of the scriptures that were made public, the workers of iniquity slander to discredit. Give them the books of the handwriting, and they will read them and will know me for the creator of all things, and will understand how there is no other God but me. Israelites, make your own decisions concerning the books that were removed from the scriptures. Too many indigenous black people believe the doubts the workers of iniquity inserted into their minds. They are not conducting their own research for the truth. They just simply believe the synagogue of Satan. Do not let the rulers of this world control your belief. Remember, the wicked is ruling the earth. Do not allow the wicked to tell you what truth is. They are not qualified to tell you the truth of the Most High's words. Remember, only the Spirit of the Most High can reveal truth and tell you the things to come. The leaders of this world do not serve the Most High. They don't have the Holy Spirit to reveal truth. The synagogue of Satan is rewriting history and the scriptures right before our eyes. Righteousness do not reside in them. The scripture said good has become evil in the beast culture. Evil is considered good. The leaders of this world made sure to enforce this in the beast system. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet or bitter. The twisted mindset and the religious belief of the workers of iniquity in high places shouldn't match with your thoughts and belief. You have to be careful with what the world welcome and accept. Whatever the beast system accept is an abomination with the Most High. Do not let the synagogue of Satan tell you what to believe. They are the same people who have stolen your identity and write you out of history. In addition, oppress your life with every chance they get. Do not let them make decisions for you. Make your own decisions. The book of Enoch revealed it was on the second day of creation the angels were created. And for all the heavenly troops I imagine, the image and essence of fire, and my eye looked at the very hard, firm rock, and from the gleam of my eyes, the lightning receives its wonderful nature, which is both fire and water, and water and fire. And one does not put out the other, nor does the one dry up the other. Therefore, the lightning is brighter than the sun, softer than water, and firmer than hard rock. And from the rock I cut off a great fire, and from the fire I created the orders of the incorporeal ten troops of angels, and their weapons are fiery, and their raiment a burning flame, and I commanded that each one should stand in his order. 
It was also on the second day, more than half of the angels were misled by the ancient falling angel called Satan. Satan is also the corporate to the downfall of our species, the human species. A little is said in the scriptures about the war in heaven. If you read the ancient writings of our ancestors, you can find the truth about the war that took place in the heavenly realm. Before the creation of Adam, the first of our kind. The book of Revelation said there was war in heaven. Michael, the archangel and the prince over our people fought against Satan and his angels. Satan and his angels were defeated and thrown down from the heavens to the bottomless. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The Bible give us the end result of the battle. The Bible does not tell us when the war took place. What was the offense of the angels that caused the Most High to imprison the fallen angels? The book of Adam and Eve revealed to us about what took place in the heavenly realm on the second day of creation that caused many angels to denounce the Most High to follow Satan. The cherub that was guarding the garden revealed to Adam how Satan deceived himself and majority of the angels. Before I talk about what Satan said to the angels that caused them to denounce the Most High, the book of Enoch revealed that the beginning of Satan's downfall was when Satan deceived himself by thinking that he could build a throne right above the firmament to become equal to the Most High. And one from out the order of angels, having turned away with the order that was under him, conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth, that he might become equal in rank to my power. And I threw him out from the heights with his angels, and he was flying in the air continuously above the bottomless. Satan wanted to be like the Most High. Satan lusts after the Godhead. Israelites and indigenous black people, death and destruction awaits you when the spirit of pride takes over your life. The scripture said pride comes before the fall. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. It is important that you examine yourself to see if the spirit of pride has made a home in your heart and life. Pride brings destruction. Israelites, don't allow the spirit of pride to destroy your life. Remain humble before the Most High. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. The Most High is the sole ruler of his creation. The Most High uses whom he pleased to show himself strong through. Israelites, do not inherit Satan's mentality of believing he could be equal to the sovereign creator of all of our existence. Satan truly deceived himself when he said in his heart that he would exalt himself above the Most High. He made plans to sit on top of the congregations on the sides of the north. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee, shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Satan was thrown down to the sides of the pits, according to the scriptures. I don't know how a created being believed he could be equal to its creator. No wonder the Most High said, Satan thought an impossible thought. The Most High is self-eternal. He is unmatched. There is none that is equal to him. When these idols hunger for the Godhead, they seek praise and worship from the people that idolize them. Israelites, this is why idolatry is a sin the Most High hates. The people are not aware when they worship these idols 
they are placing these false gods above the most high. Most people are unaware that the gods of the beast system are fallen angels. Israelites, do as the scriptures say, flee from idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The fallen angels taught mankind to worship demons for gods. The fallen angels, as well as their leader, Satan, lust after the Godhead. It was through Satan's desire to be like the Most High brought forth the war in the heavens. Satan preyed upon the angels by lying to them. Satan gathered the angels, made false promises to them. Promises such as giving them the Godhead, great kingdoms, and a divine nature. The same promises he made to Adam and Eve that led to their downfall. But now, O Adam, we will make known to thee what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them, promising them to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His hosts believed that his words were true, so they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. Israelites and indigenous black people, it is important that you understand Satan's occupation is deception. He is powerless. To be an adversary is to be an enemy. The Bible says Satan is our adversary. The Most High said to us that he has given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. The Most High went on to say nothing shall by any means hurt you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19 said that our enemies cannot hurt us. It is important to understand Satan's dominion is an illusion. Israelites and indigenous black people, the Most High gave you power over your enemies. The issue is the indigenous black people do not know how to tap into that power the Most High has given to them. Satan know that you have power over him. Satan used deception to get you to relinquish your power and bow down to him. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Satan is talented in making the creatures of the Most High accept as true what is false. Satan deceived the angels into believing he can win against the Most High who created him. Somehow the angels believe he could accomplish this. More than half of the angels renounced the glory of the Most High to follow Satan. Satan continues to do the same thing today to greedy men and women who seek fame, money, and power. For example, because of the greed of the world leaders for great kingdoms, money, and power, they accepted Satan's offer to obtain great kingdoms in the beast system. That is why all of the superpower nations of today, their foundation is wicked. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The greedy world leaders of today fail to realize everything is temporary. All the great kingdoms of this world will be destroyed. All the kingdoms of this world are led by the principalities, the fallen angels that follow Satan. The world leaders foolishly believe they are in control. If the leaders of this world were serving the Most High, third world countries wouldn't exist. The people who populate the world would be flourishing all over the world. Satan robbed the third world countries to give to the rich first world nations of today. The heathens or Gentiles that are proud of their country turn a blind eye to the wickedness their nations is causing to the third world countries of today. These same people turn around and say God has blessed them and their nations. They are sadly deceived by Satan. The God that has blessed your nations is the God of this world, Satan and his angels. Remember the fallen angels view themselves as gods. Satan has blind the eyes of many people that they cannot see. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 
the angels who were not deceived by Satan's lies and refused to yield to Satan. The book of Adam and Eve said, Satan sent for all the angels to come under his command. There is a hierarchy system in the heavens, just as there is a hierarchy among the children of men. The scripture says Satan was the anointed cherub. His position was very close to the most high. Because he was ranked higher than some angels, he commanded the angels to come under him. The holy angels refused. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. He then sent for us according to the orders in which we were to come under his command and to hearken to his vain promise, but we would not, and we took not his advice. When the holy angels refused to come under Satan, the scripture says Satan gathered all the angels that believe his deceptions and followed him to fight in war with the holy angels who refused to bow down to him. The scripture says Satan fought with the Most High and the Most High reprimanded him harshly by throwing him out of the heavenly realms with his angels to the bottomless. Then after he had fought with God and had dealt forwardly with him, he gathered together his hosts and made war with us. And if it had not been for God's strength that was with us, we could not have prevailed against him to hurl him from heaven. The holy angels who war with Satan was led by Michael, the archangel. The Bible revealed to us in the book of Revelations, Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. The Bible revealed that Satan lost the war. The scripture said the holy angels rejoiced when Satan was thrown out of heaven. This great war happened on the second day of creation, the same day the angels were created. The holy angels revealed to Adam that if the Most High did not cast Satan out of heaven, none of the angels would have survived or remained in the heavens. The war was that great. But when he fell from among us, there was great joy in heaven because of his going down from us. For had he continued in heaven, nothing, not even one angel would have remained in it. The war that took place on the second day of creation was a conflict between the holy angels against the fallen angels that followed Satan. Our species was not yet created when this war took place. Adam was created on the sixth day of creation, four days after the war. Remember, four days equal to 4,000 years. One day is like a thousand years with the Most High. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Satan and his angels was thrown down to the earth. The scripture said the fallen angels are wicked. The wickedness that prevails among us is influenced by Satan and his angels, as well as wicked men who follow and serve these wicked angels because they have a hard heart like Cain. The war that took place in the heavens is not the only rebellion that happened in the heavens. When the angels do not adhere to the commands of the Most High, they are punished just as the Most High chastised the children of men, the ones he loves, according to the scriptures. The heavens have prisons for the angels who sin. The first heaven consists of the great sea that is greater than the earthly seas. It came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him onto their wings and bore him up onto the first heaven and placed him on the clouds. And there I looked, and again I looked higher and saw the ether, and they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. The first heaven also consists of 200 angels that rule over the stars, as well as guard the storehouses like the snow, the clouds, the trees, the wind, and the flowers of the earth. These angels showed Enoch how they open and close the storehouses. They brought before my face the elders and rulers of the stellar orders and showed me 200 angels who rule the stars and their services to the heavens and fly with their wings and come around all those who sail. 
And here I looked down and saw the treasure houses of the snow and the angels who keep their terrible storehouses and the clouds whence they come out into which they go. They showed me the treasure houses of the dew like oil of the olive and the appearance of its form as of all the flowers of the earth. Further, many angels guarding the treasure houses of these things and how they are made to shut and open. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By the opening and closing of the storehouses is how we get rain on the earth, snow, as well as the variety of weather. The Most High created the children of the heavens, the angels, to operate his creation. The second heaven is a prison for the angels. These are the angels that were led by the watchers who sinned with the daughters of men, as well as the angels who followed Satan. They are held in the second heaven, being tortured in darkness. And those men took me and led me up unto the second heaven and showed me darkness, greater than earthly darkness. And there I saw prisoners hanging, watch, awaiting the great and boundless judgment. And these angels were dark looking, more than earthly darkness, and incessantly making weeping through all hours. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these incessantly tortured? They answered me, These are God's apostates, who obeyed not God's commands, but took counsel with their own will, and turned away with their prince, who also is fastened on the fifth heaven. The book of Jude in the Bible confirm the angels that are prisoned in the second heavens are the watchers that fornicated with the daughters of men and had children with them. The book of Jude revealed they are in prison in darkness, just as the book of Enoch said the second heaven is covered in darkness and a prison for the angels who sinned. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left to their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The angels who are in prison on the second heaven ask Enoch to pray for them. They are hoping the Most High would listen to Enoch and they would obtain mercy. And I felt great pity for them, and they saluted me and said to me, Men of God, pray for us to the Lord. And I answered to them, Who am I, a mortal man, that I should pray for angels? Who knoweth whither I go, or what will befall me, or who will pray for me? And go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, you have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones, and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women, and through these mysteries women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. The watchers who took an oath to take the daughters of men for wives are the second group of angels that rebel against the Most High in the heavens. These watchers also followed Satan. The watchers who sinned brought great destruction to earth. The watchers taught mankind how to do all kinds of wicked things. The watchers taught men secrets that weren't supposed to be known. The watchers taught mankind to make weapons of war, makeup, witchcraft, bestiality, technology, and crossbreeding of the different species. They've taught mankind all sorts of wickedness. That is why the Bible said the angels corrupt the earth and the watcher Azazel is responsible for all sin. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. Azazel, as well as the other watchers, asked Enoch to intercede on their behalf. The watchers who sin are ashamed of what they have done. They seek forgiveness, but their petition was rejected by the Most High. Enoch, 
thou scribe of righteousness. Go, declare to the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives. Ye have wrought great destruction on the earth, and ye shall have no peace, nor forgiveness of sin, inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children. And Enoch went and said, Azazel, thou shalt have no peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against thee to put thee in bounds, and thou shalt not have a toleration nor request granted to thee, because of the unrighteousness which I has taught, and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which thou hast shown to men, then I went and spoke to them all together, and they were all afraid, and fear and trembling seized them. I find it interesting that the watchers who sin are remorseful and seek forgiveness for their sins. Today, the children of men think they are above repentance. Some will use the word of the Most High to support their sins. Repent. The book of Enoch said the third heaven is where paradise is located. Paradise is known to us as the Garden of Eden. Paradise is currently inhabited by the angels that are upkeeping the garden. The righteous of Adam's seed will inherit paradise when the end comes. And those men took me thence and led me up unto the third heaven and placed me there. And I looked downwards and sensed the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all the sweet flowering trees and beheld their fruits, which were sweet smelling and all the foods borne by them bubbling with fragrant exhalation. And in the midst of the trees that of life and that place whereon the Lord rests, when he goes up into paradise, and this tree is of ineffable goodness and fragrance and adorned more than every existing thing, and on all sides it is in form gold-looking and vermilion and fire-like and covers all, and it has produced from all fruits. Its roots is in the garden at the earth's end, and paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk, and their springs send forth oil and wine, and they separate into four parts, and go round with quiet course, and go down into the paradise of Eden, between corruptibility and incorruptibility. Paul from the New Testament said he was taken to paradise in the third heaven. For those who doubt that paradise is in the third heaven, the book of Enoch as well as Paul confirmed paradise as we know as the Garden of Eden is in the third heaven. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. The fourth heaven consists of the sun and the moon. The book of Enoch goes into great details about the sun, the moon, and the angels that are over the sun, the moon, and the other luminaries, as well as the operation of the sun. The fifth heaven consists of the leaders of the watchers who sin with the daughters of men. The scripture said it was 200 who descend in the days of Jared and took an oath to defile themselves with the daughters of men. And Samjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred, who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. The book of Enoch revealed there are numerous soldiers being held in the fifth heaven. The job of the watchers was to watch over mankind. The watchers soon began to lust after the daughters of men. Satanel, as we know as Satan, led in the watchers' rebellion. 
the fifth heaven is the only place there is no praise and worship in the heavens. The watchers are silent due to the embarrassment of their sins. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. The men took me on to the fifth heaven and placed me, and there I saw many and countless soldiers called Gregories of human appearance, and their size was greater than that of great giants, and their faces withered, and the silence of their mouths perpetual, and there was no service on the fifth heaven. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these very withered, and their faces melancholy, and their mouths silent, and wherefore is there no service on this heaven? And they said to me, These are the Gregory, who with their prince Sitanel rejected the Lord of light. And after them are those who are held in great darkness on the second heaven. And three of them went down onto earth from the Lord's throne to the place Ermon, and broke through their vows on the shoulder of the hill Ermon, and saw the daughters of men, how good they are, and took to themselves wives, and befouled the earth with their deeds who in all times of their age made lawlessness and mixing, and giants are born, and marvelous big men, and great enmity. And therefore God judged them with great judgment, and they weep for their brethren, and they will be punished on the Lord's great day. The sixth heaven is where the archangels reside. The archangels are above the angels, as well as everything in the heavens and earth. They are appointed over certain regions of the world, as well as over the seasons, the years, over the rivers, and the seas. They are the angels who document our lives and all our deeds according to the book of Enoch. And thence those men took me and bore me up unto the sixth heaven. And there I saw seven bands of angels, very bright and very glorious, and their faces shining more than the sun's shining and glistening. And there is no difference in their faces or behavior or manner of dress. And these make the orders and learn the going of the stars and the alteration of the moon or revolution of the sun and the good government of the world. And when they see evil doing, they make commandments and instructions and sweet and loud singing and all songs of praise. These are the archangels who are above angels. Measure all life in heaven and on earth and the angels who are appointed over seasons and years, the angels who are over rivers and sea, and who are over the fruits of the earth, and the angels who are over every grass, giving food to all, to every living thing, and the angels who write all the souls of men and all their deeds, and their lives before the Lord's face. In their midst are six phoenixes and six cherubim, and six six winged ones continually, with one voice singing one voice. And it is not possible to describe their singing, and they rejoice before the Lord at his footstool. The seventh heaven is where the army of the Most High dwell. Many of us have heard of thrones and dominions in the scriptures, as well as the cherubim and the seraphim, and the many-eyed creatures that surrounds the throne of the Most High. They are in the seventh heaven. The high level archangels are in the seventh heaven as well. And those two men lift me up thence unto the seventh heaven. And I saw there a very great light and fiery troops of great archangels and corporeal forces and dominions, orders and governments, cherubim and seraphim, thrones and many eyed ones, nine regiments, the ionic stations of light. And I became afraid and began to tremble with great terror. And those men took me and led me after them and said to me, Not much is said about the eighth and the ninth heaven. The book of Enoch said in the eighth and the ninth heaven is where the twelve signs of the zodiac and the heavenly homes to the zodiacs are located. And I saw the eighth heaven, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Muzaloth, changer of the seasons, of drought, 
and of wet and of the twelve signs of the zodiac which are above the seven heaven. And I saw the ninth heaven, which is called in Hebrew Hushavim, where are the heavenly homes of the twelve signs of the zodiac. The tenth heaven is where the Most High dwell. Above his throne there is nothing else. Have courage, Enoch, do not fear, and showed me the Lord from afar, sitting on his very high throne. For what is there on the tenth heaven, since the Lord dwells here? On the tenth heaven is God. In the Hebrew tongue he is called Aravat. And all the heavenly troops would come and stand on the ten steps according to their rank, and would bow down to the Lord, and would again go to their places in joy and felicity singing songs in the boundless light with small and tender voices, gloriously serving him. Israelites and indigenous black people, according to the book of Enoch, there are 10 realms in the heavens. The children of the heavens are the angels. Each angel have an order and a job in the most highest creation. When the children of heaven are out of order, chaos and destruction fall upon the earth. The angels are responsible to upkeep the most highest creation. When these angels fall, it caused destruction and hardship for us on earth. When Satan fell, he took more than half of the angels with him in his rebellion. Satan's rebellion did not only affect the children of the heavens, but the children of the earth, the descendants of Adam as well. Satan made it his mission that Adam and his seed do not prosper in the earth. Satan declared earth to be his kingdom. Therefore did I fall, and did I make you fall by that for which I myself fell, and with you also, whosoever accept my counsel falls thereby. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again he said, Inasmuch as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. Adam and his children became a pawn in the rebellion of a prideful fallen angel. When the watchers rebelled and gave into lust, they brought their wickedness with them by teaching mankind all sorts of mysteries and secrets that we had no business knowing. The secret things the watchers revealed to the children of men is destroying them. The first rebellion against the Most High took place in the heavens before the creation of Adam. Now that the angels that sinned were punished and the Most High placed them in prisons until judgment day, righteousness is ruling the heavens. The heaven is home to the holy angels who did not rebel against the Most High, but served the Most High day and night. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. There are many realms in the heavens, and each realm serve its purpose. The first great war that took place in the heavens came from Satan, who allowed pride to deceive him. He wanted to be equal to the Most High. Because he is unable to achieve his goal, he seeks to destroy the other angels as well as our species in the process of his rebellion. Israelites, it is important to know who your enemies are. That way you are properly equipped for battle. Satan is full of wrath, but his time is limited. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. But the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Then the angels rejoice and praise God, and ask him not to destroy Adam this time, for his having sought to enter the garden, but to bear with him until the fulfillment of the promise and to help him in this world until he was free from Satan's hands. We have the holy angels to help us on our journey. You have heard how they prayed on the behalf of Adam, asking the Most High to be patient with him. Satan and his angels are the cause to the wickedness that surrounds us. 
the children of men play their part in the rebellion as well. Many indigenous black people allow Satan to deceive them into trading their glory for the lesser. Now that your knowledge has increased, the time has come for you to put on the whole armor of the Most High to withstand the schemes of the enemy. Pride is Satan's downfall. Israelites, do not inherit Satan's prideful ways. Satan and the fallen angels have nothing to lose. They are aware of their end. You have an opportunity to obtain salvation. The signs of times are upon us. Repent, for the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, he received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. 